<laughs> Did you hear anything? So, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. But uh, at, at the end of the day, it's a biased analysis. The cut, the tax cuts it's that I experienced. It's not a bias analysis. It's literally, dude. How, how are you saying it's a bias analysis coming from the fucking, uh, coming from uh, what's it called, uh, like leading economists, bro? Like, what are you saying, bro? It's coming. Okay. I appreciate appreciate the the hand art. Thank you so much. It's literally coming, uh, from the Joint Committee on Taxation, bro. Okay, and, and you don't think that they're biased? You you believe the Joint that. Committee that's, on that's, Taxation? That's, yeah, I think yeah. That's you don't be think the best they're... source for this. Okay, that's cool. The best source normally is the individual. It's my feelings. Down. My feelings. No, not, Mark, not feelings. It's, it's my it's, feelings. It's, that's that's what you're no, telling me right feelings. now. You're it's, giving it's, me you're giving me your opinion, Mark. You're yes, not giving me opinion. actual evidence. Okay. No, no. I am I am a hundred percent giving you my opinion. That's literally why we're talking. I'm giving you my opinion on the how I'm paying. I'm not taxes. giving you my opinion. I'm giving you evidence. Right? No, you're giving I, me something I have, else. I have I have an opinion that the evidence is true, but I'm just giving you Parker, the evidence. You, you're you're quoting somebody's opinion as I'm not quoting an opinion, fact. dude. Are you listening to me? Appreciate the hand. Yeah, Thank you so much. I am. Dude, you're you're, you're gonna you're get saying, me banned on this account, but I'm bro, it's unbelievable. Listen, you're saying that an analysis done by a side that you like. Okay. It's not a no, side I mean, that I like. It's literally a joint committee on taxation, Mark. And what does it's that mean to me? Who it's an analysis. Of the joint committee on dude, it's not opinion. It's literally an analysis. Appreciate the duck thank you so much. It's not about the biases you have. It's about what the data indicates. Yes. I agree. Based on the way that they're doing their calculations, factoring the things that they want to factor in, it is an opinion. Oh my gosh. It's an opinion. I, you can't get I to this guy, bro. It's just you can't you can't get to him. You can't get to him. You, you can't get to this well. guy. You just, no, it's impossible. It's impossible, dude. You just like I'll give you a literal thirty-page fucking bi bibliography on something, and you'll be like, "It's just the the, the pe people's with PhDs' opinions. They conducted Parker, studies." Parker, are you are you saying that you don't know that there's other people who have been done analysis on it and found that there are net savings to Americans? Because of that tax. Can you show me how they had an analysis on it that led to, again, after tax income being higher for those groups? Yeah, I'm just getting in. So, you know, I can pull some stuff up. But uh, we look, I'll come back to it and I'll and I'll show you some other opinions that don't agree with the opinion of the people you're quoting. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to pretend that they're facts. I'm going to admit that these are opinions because that's exactly what they are. And an analysis, hate to break it to you, is an opinion. Like, I don't know where- I'm sorry, Mark, but I think you're a little bit dumb. Well, that's fine. You can have your opinion. You're entitled to it. I don't have a problem with that. I think that you guys- That's an opinion. Clearly. Okay, an analysis, right, has a methodology. An that's not an opinion. An opinion is, I believe this to be true. An analysis is not a, I believe this to be true. It's not a, I think Mark is dumb. It's a, this is what the data indicates. So you're saying that two groups can do an analysis and they're going to be, they're going to have the same. Yeah, Mark, when I did an uh, econometric model and I had made an analysis on that econometric model, I don't just put my own opinions there, Mark, right? I'm observing the data and giving what it says, okay? I'm not giving my own BS, my own opinion there, all right? I'm telling you what the data indicates, okay? Yes, based on your research, right? Yes, based on the, fact based on the data, based on the data. Based on the factors, oh, right, here, let me just pull it up. What was the, uh, give me the, um, you wanna show me that again real quick? I'll, I'll look it up. I got you, I got you, so. It is the title of it is the middle class needs a tax cut. Trump did not give it to him. <laughs> and again, right? They're literally the, the results come from the Joint Committee on Taxation, which is listed, and the Tax Policy Center, which is listed. Okay. Brookings that EDU. Yeah, it's a it's a brilliant source. Okay. So let's take a look here. Middle class has a I can't, bro. There's no way. So you're saying that. 
All right. Oh, 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 okay. Anything that disagrees with you is a lefty source of that. Well, I mean, it's it's clear. Grandpa, I appreciate the glowing jellyfish. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Grandpa Dave. W, Grandpa Dave, thank you so much, man. Right, okay, got it, right. So this is because of the drop-off. And, yeah, to be fair, Republicans hope to extend the law beyond 2027, but that's highly unlikely, yada, 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 right? So, yeah, I mean, clearly this is, uh, this is an opinion. This is, this is an article. They give their opinions about the data. I just showed you the data. I literally just showed you the data. Okay. I'm pointing at the data. They give their opinion about the data. I gave you the data. Okay. Here's the issue with it, right? With what you're showing, right? That's by 2027. The tax law makes the middle class worse off, right? Yeah, not if he wins, because there'll be more tax cuts, clearly, because that's what Republicans do, right? So, so it's a straw man. It was, it was clever. It was cool. It's and not all. a straw man. It is, and it's an opinion because it's a forecast. It is an opinion. It, it is saying that there won't be any more tax cuts. With uh, obviously, Republicans want for every. For every class, if you want to call it, okay, for every... Uh, Extending the tax law beyond 2027 is highly unlikely. If you're going to say that it's likely, well, then you'd have to demonstrate that it would lead to, right, uh, like uh, somehow the lower classes getting a tax cut, which okay. is not indicated here. Okay. As of right now, and this is what I said, and this is what you tried to debunk, but you were wrong, okay, is that his tax cuts saved us all money. It does. It literally, after-tax income decreased for the lowest quintile and for the middle class and increased for the highest quintile, top 1% and the top 0.1%. That's Your fucking tax percent. cuts and job acts get, literally increased, right, uh, or decreased the living conditions for people who are making less and increased it for people who are making more. So that's only by 2027. That's, that's not- by 2027, that's, that's through the tax of, cuts. That's not as of today, Parker. It's as of 2027, yes. Right. Right, but, but we're not there yet, right? Well, yeah, it's not 2027 so yet. So it's like a straw man, but it's a cool, like it's I said, not it a is, straw man. It, it is because when I said, I said that he saved us money, he cut our taxes. In fact, he did. What happens in 2027? Because people this guy's voted so all dumb, bro. I literally just showed you that it didn't after tax yeah. income decreased. Parker, Parker, I've been quite respectful of you, but you're being dumb here. Okay? No, I'm disagreeing with you. It's not about disagreeing. It's about it's about it's about it's literally me showing it's you the facts. A little naive, okay? And yeah, I'm not okay. being I'm not be, being because naive. Unlike you, I'm not going to call you dumb. I'm not. I don't do that. To you people. literally not, came on my live, called me naive, and you were. What are you talking about? It's the same thing. I'm, I just called you in naive, and in response to you calling me dumb, Parker. Like that's your your. No, you called me naive earlier when you first came on the live. No, that was the guy before me. You're wrong. I didn't call you naive. This is the first time I used that word. In okay, this, well, I must be I must be mistaken. I apologize. Mm. That's okay. I, I'm okay with that. We can move on to another topic because clearly we're not going to agree. But I just wanted to point out the fact that what you just tried to do was a straw man. That's not a straw man. It is. Can you define it, straw man? You're, you're using a BS argument that has nothing to do with what I said. That's not what a straw man is. Okay. okay. All right. A straw man is a purple, purposeful misrepresentation of an argument, right? That is supposed to make the argument look bad. I didn't misrepresent shit. I told you what it is. Uh, no, because I said that he saved us money. He's saving us money. And it's not. It it's literally middle it class and lower you. quintile decrease after tax income. You read it yourself. It, it is the case that after the uh, tax cuts decrease that it would get revisited, right? And possibly it'll get moved down. Maybe it won't. Depends on who's in office. Really, Democrats are in office. It'll go up. Republicans go in office. It'll go down. But I'm talking about today. You're the one who brought up 2027. And you're saying he made it worse, but he didn't. And it's it's patently false. As of today, we are doing better tax-wise under Trump's It's It is not patently false. I said the Tax Cut and Jobs Act is leading to this. And you're disputing it by saying, oh, th we haven't reached the time in which it is the case that this is happening yet. Well, th oh. that's because it's happening still. Oh, his tax policy expires, Parker. That's, that, that yeah, is what- Yeah, in 2020, dude, like, what, you're not listening, bro. Huh? I, I think that we're just disagreeing and it's no, okay. No, it's, not, it's not a disagreement. Let's move on to other things. How, wait, what are you disagreeing on? I, I'm disagreeing on 
you saying that he's made it worse because of what's going to happen by 2027. And I'm saying the my, Yeah, my, he, these, this is something that makes it worse. Okay. But not worse than before. It just goes it back. It was worse than before, yes. Because yeah. it's, it's, giving, it's giving more after-tax income to people who are rich and less to people who have uh, less money. No, no, that's that. No, no, that's that's not the case. That's exactly what it says. I just showed you that all the tax cuts are expiring and then you're conflating and then they're conflating the corporate tax rate with the rich. And that's not how it works. The corporate tax rate is the corporate tax rate and the income taxes for everybody is going to go. No, no, they're not conflating that. They're, they're telling you which parts go to that. That's they account for that in the context of the analysis. It's literally in the data set. And they call it the the top 0.1%. Top 0.1% is given a particular threshold of income. Yeah, but and they're including the corporate tax rate. Uh, again, they don't just attribute every corporate tax rate to be that high because all, not all, uh, I mean, not every corporate tax, no, they don't assor- associate all corporations to be that high, only ones in which are 0.1%. Right, Parker. So you see the way that's disingenuous because we're talking about, when we're talking about the tax. Yeah, How is that disingenuous? That just tells you that most of the cuts went to the top 1%. Yeah, except except that that's like not realistic. Okay. The, that the is, that's literally what it indicates. All right. What was the, what was the percentage of the tax cuts for each bracket? Do you, do you know, do you have that data? So you, you would say that like it decreased by 2% marginally on many different tax brackets. Again, those differences lead to completely disparate outcomes as it relates to the overall pricing. Okay. So clearly still, we see that given all the tax cuts, all the deductibles, everything that was applied in the tax cuts and jobs act, but, but that by 2027, again, lowest quintile and middle class have decreased after tax income, highest quintile, top 1% and top 0.1% have increased. This isn't anything that I just have an opinion on. This is what the data indicates. Right. So, so what, what the, uh, what the Tax uh, Cuts and Jobs Act did was it cut the tax rate for uh, the second bracket by 3%, right? The fourth bracket by 3%. And the, I, I, I mean, it scales up, right? I mean, you can look at this stuff. And it doesn't raise it back to a high, it doesn't make it higher than it was before, which mind you is under the previous tax policy, which was Obama. So if you're saying it's going to make it worse, then you're saying that, that his cuts were better than Obama's, which I don't think that you actually agree with, right? So just because they're expiring on income tax. How would it say that his taxes were better than Obama? Obama didn't engage in cuts for for millionaires. Because you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you take millionaires out of your vocabulary and stop using that as like some kind of crutch for your argument, the issue is, is how much Americans, everyday Americans like you and I, Parker, who aren't millionaires. I don't know if you're a millionaire, but whatever. um, I'm not. I I could see. I mean, you got a lot of people following you, but you probably will be. Anyway. um, Only on my sixth account. Yeah, well, look, you're doing good, dude. I, I watch you. I, I mean, I watch you. I, I like I, I like watching you debate people. I think it's I think it's hilarious. That's why, uh, dude. We, you we can be civil and we can disagree, and it's a very. He's important- paid by the DNC, but he's on a sixth account. I know, and he's I, banned on the main for no reason. He I, appeal I, appeal denied in 1969. Uh, paid by the DNC. I know. I've heard. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just I'm just I'm just addressing the dumbass in the chat. Sorry. No, it's all good. Uh you know, look, I, I, that's why I say, like, I, I've, I've wanted to, to have a conversation with you for a while because I think that you have you – know, one of the main reasons why I like to debate people is to help me, A, strengthen my point of view, but also to hear the cracks in it, right? So I'm okay with looking up anything that you show me, but I also know how to decipher BS, okay? Because at one time I was a Democrat, and I believed all the hype and all the crap that I was fed. And then I started doing the independent research, reading bills, reading the opinions of these politicians who voted this way or that way, and realized that, hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not as liberal as I thought I was, you know? So, Opposite you know. happened to me. I grew up in a conservative Christian household in 2016. I was a Trump supporter. I was happy that Trump won, right, in 27, that, that he was a president in 2017. I've changed, right? I've I've seen new information. Yes, you went to college. Um, no, I actually believe this before I went to college. Wait, wait, I thought I was wait. I was actually a communist at a particular point. So I went from being um, 
a you uh, for Trump as a communist. Dude, I didn't vote. I was too young. I was a freshman in high school when I was right, a Trump okay, supporter. That's what I, thought. Right, okay, I went what from I... being a Trump supporter to being a communist, right? To then being uh, like a social democrat. Okay, so 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 you're still pro capitalism or no? Nah? I'm a social democrat, which is pro capitalism. Yeah, it's okay. capitalism with regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's heav- heavily regulated. You're right, it, it, but it is the beginning of of the slide towards communism. But anyway, no, yeah. you don't know I'll, what communism is. Oh, I do. But oh, I know, you want to bet? I know that our definitions of it are. I, I bet you you're going to give me the wrong definition. Okay, well let's test it. So the way I would define it, the, the way I would define communism is the government ownership. Over I knew you're going to say, gonna say that government right, does stuff. You know my age, right? And you know that that's what government we were- does stuff. No, that's not what communism is. Communism is a stateless, classless, and moneyless society. Okay, right, that's what but, communism is. But 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 let's just say okay. So so let's let me just write that down. So you said it's classless, right? And and what else? Stateless and moneyless. Stateless and moneyless, right? So basically, like a primitive form of uh, a communal organization, or something to that effect, right? I, gu- I guess if it's uh, stateless, you mean uh, is it like borderless? Is that it? Uh, so? So yes, there wouldn't be borders. Uh, the, the stateless just means that there's not a monopoly on violence. Stateless would just mean that there's not a monopoly on violence. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I digress. Let me ask you this. What is it called when the means of production is controlled by private individuals? And that's capitalism. And what is it called when the means of production is controlled by society? Pre- appreciate the appreciate the duck. Thank you so much. If it's publicly owned, in a typical yeah. sense, people would refer to that as socialism. Okay. And what would it be called when the means of production is controlled by a government? Um, state socialism, if it, if it's the case that it's all on the arms of the people, otherwise it's just totalitarianism. Okay. Well, see, this is, this is new. So in the it's old just command control, right? So in the old Webster's dictionary, communism was defined as the government ownership over the means of production. Socialism was defined as the social ownership. And that's over not the- what communists mean by communism. If you've read any I, communist I, I, literature. I, 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 I'm aware. I, I, I speak to communists quite regularly uh, and have, you know, decent debates with them. But um, this is the definition as we grew up knowing it. So if it's the government owner ownership over the means of production, we consider it communism. If it's social ownership, we consider it socialism. There's a whole lot of other things that, that, fo- that follow and, and can or cannot flow under communism, but it would still be communism to us if the government controls the means of production. And this is like, this is like normal, like what Americans thought prior to this new- That doesn't mean it's right. That just, that's I mean, red scare propaganda. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's fine. But again, I mean, I'm not a communist. Again, I'm yeah. not a socialist, but right. this is red scare propaganda. Most people don't know what it is because they have been taught wrong. Okay. Uh, it, I don't, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you would call it, but you said that you would call what I call communism. You would call what? Uh, what you call communism is just either state socialism or it's, uh, it's just like a, like a sort of a totalitarian, uh, command control style government. You know, I can actually see coherence in calling it state socialism, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because social socialism is with the workers controlling the means of production. Okay, so state socialism is like the state owns it on behalf of the workers, yeah. but like the state is formed democratically by the workers. So, like, uh, there's just different notions of that, and that's been how it's applied his, throughout history to a most knowledgeable degree, or tried to have been applied, which hasn't been fully but applied even, um, uh, which uh, is why people refer to it that way. But there's been other forms that have been been tried more libertarian-esque forms. Uh, there are even f- uh, socialist forms of business, right? They're called cooperatives, democratically yeah. run businesses. Right, they don't work out so well. Uh, they do in many different places. My grandpa actually used to work in a cooperative when he was alive. 
Okay, yeah, so but... they work in many different areas. It's just they're not widespread because they they have hard time getting off the ground. Yeah, right. Because you need capital, and that's kind of hard. Once they right? get off the ground, though, uh, it seems fine. So if they had like subsidies, they'd probably do pretty well. And, and I, 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 right, and I suppose that you are definitely pro subsidies, right? Yeah, for <laughs> for, for cooperatives, yeah. <laughs> You're right. So there's a lot of things that we don't agree on uh, ideologically within politics, and I think that that should be the you know I, I wish that that would be the main argument for us, right? Because like asking people why they vote for Trump, I think that a lot of people don't even really know. I also think that a lot of people don't know why they vote for Biden. For the longest time, I thought Clinton was great until I realized how awful he was, right? And um, that's because I was young and I did wasn't interested in politics. I was just programmed to repeat what I heard. And I believe the media was telling me the truth all the time, to be honest with you. So, but um, you know what? What? Uh, what else would you say? Uh, well, no, let's, let's just, I guess, go on to another, another part of, you know, Trump and what I liked about him. Right. Um, I liked his foreign policy. I liked his, you know, drawing a red line and sticking to it. I liked his not being scared to attack a position where Russia was just because it was Russia is the first president in my lifetime who actually stood that firm against Russia. And, um, you know, we isn't uh, Biden supporting Ukraine standing firm against Russia? No, no. I think that I think that. So you just you just ignore everything that that Biden does and accepts everything that Trump does. That's literally what you're doing. Well, no. I think that for one thing, like, okay, let let me put it this way: Did we have an alliance with Syria or with the Syrian people? Uh, what's up? Say that one more time. Do we have an alliance with the Syria or the Syrian people? Uh, do we have alliance with it? It depends on what group in Syria. Okay. There, right. there are multiple different groups in Syria that were fighting against each other. Right. Uh, there, there are like Russian backed forces. There are American backed forces. There's uh, ISIS, everyone's against. There's a lot of proxy going on there, right? Yeah, there's a lot of proxy war there. Right, right. So, um, so, so comparing like the Ukraine issue, which like we were kind of obligated to, doesn't matter whether I don't believe that no matter who we have in office, um, they're not going to, you know, push to help Ukraine. We have an obligation there, right? Just like Israel, we have an obligation. It's not like we can just nah, we're not going to honor our treaties. Oh, I I would go against Israel's treaties. Oh, so, okay. So well, so all right. So you then so. Then it is the case that we can Yeah, I mean, like when you violate international law, engage in war crimes, are plausibly engaging in genocide, have displaced literally millions of people, right, and uh, led to 70% of Palestinians starving, with th over 30,000 Palestinians dead, 70% of them being w women and children. Yeah, I don't think that we'd have to hold up to that. That seems as a violation to any of the international laws we have, whereas we wouldn't see the same type of thing with Ukraine, right? Yeah, on that, on that, and I don't, and I don't want to get too deep into the whole Israel Palestine um, issues, but I do want to ask you this: Do you know of a country in the history of the world who has ever been repeatedly attacked by a foe and not like took them out completely? Yeah. So again, what do you mean repeatedly attacked when they've literally been occupying, illegally occupying that region for generations, displacing Palestinians in the area because they believe it's their holy land, right? Uh, what about all of those things? Do you know how it was acquired, the land? Do you know how like how all that happened? Uh, so are you going to talk about the the split after World War Two? No. Let's let's go a little bit a little bit earlier. What about who, it? Who, whose land was that? You're trying to say at some point it was people's land before this. Okay, well then let me ask you the question. Would would indigenous people in America be justified in stealing your land? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. No, real question, Mark. Who was there first? Who was really? There who was there first, Mark? The history of the world? Yeah, who was there first? Right, would that be, would it be justified for them to come and steal your land? 
No, no. So that's not no. Nice. So if it's not justified for them to come stealing your land, then stop using that reasoning to then justify right Israelis going in and stealing Palestinian land. You can go and buy it. Go, go for it. Go buy it. I think it might be possible, Parker, that you might debate people too much and that you're conflating my arguments with other people's arguments. I didn't even get my point out. What argument I, am I conflating this with? I simply asked you a question, and you directly went to some other... I don't even know what you're talking about, to be honest with you. So, what was the question you asked? I said, you, said, uh, you said just after World War II, and I said, no, just a little bit before that. Whose land was that? Yeah, and then I responded to that. If it's going to be based upon whose land it is, well, no, no, great. Whose land, whose land was it just before that? You would say you would say before that at some point there were there were Jewish people living on that land. No, no. After that, just before World War Two, whose land was it? Um, I don't know. What you're trying to say are you, are you, if you're going to rub back the Palestinians. No, just the land. And then itself. prior to that, there were Ottomans. In that right. Land. Yes. 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 Very good. Ottomans. Right. It was the Ottoman Empire. Right. And what happened to them? Um, the Ottoman Empire collapsed. Yeah. Why? Don't remember World War One. They chose I think. the wrong side of history, Parker. They chose the wrong side of history, right? Okay. They went against the world and decency and like not being genocidal maniacs, right? Like they decided to go against the wrong side, and so the entire region fell apart and got split. And the and the countries who took it, uh, our side, the, the the righteous side that was like trying to li liberate people and like stop people being mass on the lives, right? They got the land and they, they got to do with what they wanted to do with it, right? So it just is what it is, right? These people were homicidal maniacs. They, they, they chose the wrong side of history. Their entire, you know, nation fell apart and it was no longer the Ottoman Empire. Before that, it was nobody's it, it, since the biblical days and who cares about that? What matters is what happened to the people who got, you know, who basically lost the rights to their land because they fell on the wrong side of hi history because they sided with who? They sided with the wrong people, right? The evil side, right? So it, it, it is the case to say that when France and England, and I guess there was a couple other countries, I don't remember all the history. I, you know, I'm, I don't, my memory is not that sharp, but, um, it is the case that, you know, these countries got to do with what, with the, with the land, what they wanted to do. And they decided to give it back to the people who were living there. Right. They, they, they even caused some infighting and the victors came out and it is what it is. Right. So I, I, I don't think that it's okay to just say that, you know, um, you know, you have to ignore a lot of the history there to fall on either one of the sides and say like, uh, this side was wrong and this side is righteous. Cause I don't really think that any of their hands are clean and, uh, you know, what happens happens when we have an alliance and, and your side argues this quite often, right? When we have an alliance, we should honor our alliances and our treaties. Canister, thank you for the galaxy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Not when they violate war crimes, engage in genocide, possibly engage in genocide, right? Are legally occupying regions. They're starving millions of Palestinian children because they're engaging in blockades, limiting our ability to get humanitarian aid to uh, Palestinians. Uh, uh, you just, what about those things? I mean, I think that I have They've co constantly denied resolutions for the context of a ceasefire. I mean, hasn't that been on both sides? Yeah, the U.S. has used most of their veto power to do that, too, right? And that's, again, something I disagree with the U.S. on. I think that's ridiculous, right? The U.S. is literally aiding and abetting in genocide there. Like, Well, well, the U.N. hasn't decided that just yet, right? So to call it genocide just right now would it's be— plausi a, It's plausibly it's considered plausible. genocide by that, but given the definitions they have, that's literally— and if, saying plausibly indicates it's, it's most likely, so— Based upon their their determinations, yeah, it is. You're saying plausible? Yeah, it's the most likely. Yeah, when it, that's what plausible means. Pla plausible means plausible more means likely than not, right? No, plausible means that it, it could be the case. Wouldn't they just say possible? I could be mistaking that, Wouldn't but they say more likely. Um, again, plausible could just be used as a word for that, but I might be mistaken. 
Yeah, I, I, I would say that like there, there's an investigation, and we'll have to see what 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 they come to, what conclusions they come to. But plausible has never in the history of the word been considered as the most likely. If plausible just means no, common. no, no, more like does it mean more likely than not? Like typically, it means more likely, right? Or probable? Possible is is how I've always taken the word. I mean, a plausible means like given given the accusation. It is plausible. This is a possibility. It could be the case that this is occurring. It doesn't mean it's the most likely, it's more likely, or any other thing like that. I think that that's... that's, that's probable. Good. Yeah, probable. Is that so, what? yeah, I'm using the term correctly. That's what? Thesaurus, or...? <laughs> uh, this is straight from Oxford Languages. Like, it's it likely happened. Seeming reasonable or probable? Is not more likely. But I digress. This is a this is a silly. That argument. literally conforms my conforms what I was saying, but okay. What? Reasonable or probable is not most likely. It's uh reasonable would be most likely, but um more probable than like more probable than not is definitely most likely. That's, okay. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think they've called a lot of things plausible. That's like the lowest standard by which they, they will say that, uh, you know, that they're going to continue an investigation. So, but in any case, um, I, yeah, I think you're just going to keep it denying his fairly war crimes. Well, I mean, I, I don't know what the war crimes are. I think that from what I've they, seen. They've been already identified by the UN. If you take the UN and what they say, well, then you'd already agree that they've committed war crimes. They've been illegally occupying the region. Like, these things have already been determined by the UN. Well, I mean, the UN is full of uh, Israeli's uh, enemies, too, right? Like, you people. see how he just, like, completely denies it? It's so real. Well, no. I'm, so, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not denying it. I'm saying that it is the case that the majority of the world doesn't like the Jews and haven't liked the Jews and like that's literally why they have this idea called Zionism right because they need a place to be safe yo you, BT you thank you what, so much for the shiny air balloon you know I appreciate BT to, thank you so much you know what happened in World War II that led to them being mass exterminated uh, you're talking about Jewish people yeah um, the dehumanization of Jewish people the scapegoating of Jewish people Christian knocked and uh, the plenty of different things. Yeah, and and most importantly, all of the countries around the world saying no, we're not going to take them. So when they were being shipped out before they were being exterminated, they were being returned, and that was why he came up with a final solution, right? So like it was like literally that the entire world hated them, didn't want them there, and so they ended up suffering what they suffered, right? So the world has and still does not like Jews. And it is, uh, it's quite understandable that, you know, people distrust the world when it comes to their, their judgments against the Jewish people. I mean, if you're a Jew, I think that that's, you know, plausible. so, so wait, say that one more time. That last part again, I need you to say that one more time. The world is highly anti-Semitic and it has always been. Okay. Okay. What about it? it? So much so that it led to the final solution, right? When, when, when he went before he was trying to exterminate them, he was just trying to get them out, sent them to America. What did America do? Send them. So back. then why, why justify the extermination of another group? Well, I'm not, I, I don't think it's, okay. isn't that so Israel is bombing areas in which they know have women and children in there, right? They know are not Hamas agents. Okay. Yeah. But I also, well, I don't know if that's true. They're but... engaging in the use of white phosphorus gas, which they know is banned by the UN as war crime, which can then lead to the deaths of any other innocent civilians. I don't right, think they're engaging in a blockade that's leading to 70% of Palestinians star starving so they can get access to humanitarian aid. I mean, the blockades, I kind of understand. I mean, you know, so otherwise... you, under you understand starving Palestinian children? No, I understand not allowing uh, terrorists to, or T groups to, you know, have access to more weapons. Like there's other stuff involved there, I think. Yeah. So giving humanitarian aid and food is not access to more weapons. They're literally dropping food from like from planes. Okay. How is that going to be used for more weapons? Who who is? The U.S. Oh, we're dropping food there. Yes, and supplies. Okay. 
So then how... Granted, so, the U.S. is also fucking funding the, the weapons to go to Israel, which is disgusting. Right, so, but wait, so, but then how are they stopping us from providing them food? Uh, so, again, uh, by, by blockades in the region for different types of things, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like weapons, right? I mean, it's it's the idea to not give mass on alivers more weapons. It's to- also blocking of aid that's humanitarian, right? The blockade is of of the humanitarian aid. Do you, yeah, you understand I, I the airdrops are because think, of the blockade, right? I, I think that you're getting you're getting that information from secondary sources, just as I am, really. And I don't think that we can really know for sure what's going there. I think that so. So then, stop justifying Israeli war crimes. The, the UN well, determined this. I, I, I don't. I don't believe a lot of that stuff. So I. I, I kind of yeah, think. Yeah, but you believe Israeli intelligence. Well, I no. So I. I believe that Israel is. I believe that Israel is strong enough to like just end the conflict in a day if they wanted to, and I don't think that they do. I think that they're very careful about trying not to. I think that they're. I think that they go f- steps far beyond what any other country has done in the history of the world in the middle of a war. And so like, you know, look, I'm, I, I feel for the people. I, I don't, I'm not there. And all I hear is accusations from all sides. And realistically, if you're biased, you can choose a side, but without knowing any of this for yourself, I think that it, you just have to chalk it up to like, kind of like, I, I hope that there's resolutions with the UN and you know something is found to be uh well then tell the st- tell the US to stop blocking them tell the Israel to stop blocking them and then rebranding a ceasefire agreement as their own thing that literally doesn't even give Palestinians like permanent ceasefire uh which will then literally uh they're trying to rebrand as like oh Palestinians aren't accepting a ceasefire well so so what is it that Israel want they want the land uh, is that what they're saying in these talks that they we, we want the land? They're, they're also saying that they want to get rid of Hamas, okay. right? But what they don't care about they they don't care about um, uh, uh, pal- the deaths of innocent Palestinians for right uh, for the killing of Hamas, right? And they've also a lot of people in the Israeli government have completely basically don't see a distinction between uh, Palestinians and Hamas, right? So isn't isn't like isn't like Israel under like a, a unity government right now? Say that one more time. Isn't Israel like being ruled under like a unity government right now with the left and the right like kind of like co-ruling the nation right now in its time of war? Um uh like what by co-ruling would you just be referring to like that in the context of any other? Like are you just saying they're working together? Yeah, yeah, like they, 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 they've suspended their normal government and implemented this like unity government with the left and the right, and like all sides are kind of like making these decisions in Israel. Because I, th- I don't, I don't think that's even relevant if that was the case. Well, I mean, the reason I'm saying that is because it, it, it is the case that there is a large amount of Israel prior to October seventh, of course, that was like you know pro. Palestine and 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 two state solution and peace and they just wanted to like make peace right and now they have kind of like turned right so maybe it's possible that these people are seeing things and seeing evidence of things and you know that you and I aren't and that's why they've changed their minds so much cuz you are talking about people who are who are, who are for all intents and purposes, leftists and very peaceful people who have now changed their entire stance on this war, right? So it's it's possible that you and I don't know the whole story. Okay, so your whole response to this in, in terms of us indicating that there's plausibly genocide occurring, that Israel is committing war crimes, that uh, they're displacing millions of Palestinians, that they're starving children, right, and they're starving families, 70% of Palestinians starving due to the blockades, right? All of these things, right? And you, you dispute them by saying, oh, we just don't know enough about the region? Well, no, I, I think it's, 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 it's more likely the case that we don't know what's all behind what you just said, right? Like you're so there saying, must be some reason justifying that? So, so, yeah, so in other words, you're you saying... You think that there's some reason justifying that, you just don't know. Well, no, I think that's not crazy. Ju- not, ju- not justifying. I'm saying that, okay, here, let me put it to you this way, right? 
the Palestinians prior to October 7th were not being uh, attacked by Israel. Is that wrong or is that, am I wrong? Say that one more time. Prior to October 7th, they weren't being attacked by Israel, right? Uh, there were absolutely attacks. There was an illegal occupation, apartheid. There was literally, right, killing of Palestinians, right, for, for generations. I don't know what you're talking about. They literally would appreciate the magic rhythm. Thank you so much. Go and just steal people's houses, right, and land through different types of uh, courts and stuff like that. Right, so oh. there's there's plenty of things. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I didn't see those things. So, I, I mean, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but from what I understood, I recommend looking into it, right? Instead of forming yeah. a position on it, look into it. Right. So, and that's what I'm saying is that really we can't, right? Because you're either going to really, you can't, you right? can't, you can't say well, we can't, you can't. You're going to either believe that. Yo, Dom, them. thank you so much for the $20 and 24 cents on cash. App. Thank you so much, Dom. I appreciate it. It's good to see you as always, man. Thank you so much, bro. So the Palestinians are saying one thing, and they're actually not the Palestinians so much as Hamas is saying one thing and uh, Israel is saying another, right? So you have to pick a side that you believe first and then just, like, you don't have proof of these things. All right, you, all right Mark, have, I think we're just kind of saying the same thing. Is there anything else you want to add or talk about before I go on to the next person? Yeah, sure. We can get, we can talk about anything. Uh, you know, like I said, I mean, where, where we, the reason that we got here is because I talked about the difference in the world prior to Biden, right? And how we, where we were under Trump, no new wars, no new wars. Um, a much more. No new wars under Biden. Really? Ukraine's a new war. Israel's a new world, war. Okay. So if you want to talk about, how about this? What about the 450% increase in military drone strikes in the Middle East? What about Appreciate it? Appreciate the hand art. Thank you so much. What about it? Is that not new war? No. That was, okay, a, that so was an existing, that was an existing what do you con war. What do you consider war? That wasn't that, that wasn't, wasn't, I'm sorry, forgive me if I'm wrong here. Wasn't that the existing issue with ISIS that you're talking about? What? Say that I, one more time. Th those drone strikes were I in relation to the issues with ISIS and Iraq, wasn't it? Uh, so yeah, there, there's Trump trying to take out, um, ISIS. There's, tr there's m many different types of things he's increasing in the, in the Middle East to, to be able to do so. But you said, regardless of whether or not you think there's reason, right? There's an increase in war, right? There's an increase in war acts. That's exactly uh, what you were referencing when you were saying war. Right, I said that's exactly war. what you're referencing. I said, no, no. I was okay. So define war. No, no new wars, no new conflicts under Trump. What do you mean by okay? So nope, what, do you mean by, what do you mean by what do you mean by what do you mean by new conflicts? I mean, you don't understand what I'm saying, or what do you mean by conflicts? Because no, this is relevant to say because like so, so it, it, it's, it would determine whether or not it applies. Okay, so while while he was in office, we were still in Iraq, right? We were yeah. still dealing with Syria, right? We were still dealing with Afghanistan, right? Um, but there was no new conflicts, right? There was no new wars around the world that we were getting. So involved. I just want you to like, tell me what you mean by new conflicts, man. No new wars. Yeah. So what do you mean by, so what do you, can you just tell me what you mean by that? Because if you mean by, uh, conflicts, like, so a war is a conflict between two nations, military forces, powers, right? Or possibly a civil war would be a conflict between, you know, groups uh, within the same nation. Um, I'm saying that there were no new conflicts between countries under Trump. So uh, what about um, China and India having conflict? What about the U.S. Uh, uh, they have a war? Uh, assassinating a top military general in Iran? Right. What about the proxy war on Syria with like with Russia that was continued? What about the the four hundred fifty percent increase in military drone strikes in the Middle East? Okay, what so about all so of those things? Yeah, Appreciate so we, the bunny ears, thank you. So we just touched on that, right? So the new a new conflict would be a new conflict. So the issues with the Middle East and the drone strikes were because of existing conflicts. Syria was an existing conflict. I don't know if you remember, but but there was a point where Obama said that. Okay, so when you say existing conflict, well, wasn't Ukraine an existing conflict from twenty fourteen?
No, I, I no. What? No, what, the no. annexation of Crimea was not an existing conflict. It the was. Russian well, government the doesn't consider that they've been allowed. No, because the, uh, the government, the, the Russian government doesn't consider that there's been a conflict between Russia and Ukraine since 2014. No, so oh, so Obama allowed the annexation of Crimea, right? He didn't do anything about it. He did. There, there were massive sanctions that limited the value of the Russian dollar. Okay. Okay. The Russian ruble. Okay. Was there a, was there a war? Was there a war? Yes. Um, well, technically, yes. Where? Technically, technically, lots of people consider this still the war, that the war started in 2014. It just depends on what you mean. Yeah, so, so it's still, it's still, it's still a conflict. Wait, so the Ukraine-Russia situation was still a conflict that existed prior to this point. And the same thing with the Israel-Palestine. That was still conflict prior to this point. You claiming that new conflict is just saying that there was like an increase in conflict or a change in the conflict. Okay? That's all you're saying. Which those exact same things exist in the Middle East, existed with India, existed with uh, Iran, existed with all of these different things that the, Trump was involved in. So okay. by the same very definition that you're using to say that Trump never got us involved in new wars, you can use to then say Biden's never got us involved in new wars. And that makes no sense, right? Okay, so no. So no, maybe you didn't hear it when I said that uh, war is a conflict between two military powers of different countries, sometimes within the same country, right? So a war is actually a war. It's not a conflict. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you could call a disagreement between two countries a conflict, right? And it's not a war, right? There is no new wars. This is this is actual. I would blood. just then ask what you mean by war again, but like I, I don't. Think I just we're going told you it's, it's 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 an armed conflict between two military powers of. Yeah, uh, and and again, based upon that same standard, it would be the case that Trump literally either got us into new wars, or if you would accept the other way, right? He literally uh, neither did Biden. Okay. What, wait, wait. What new war did Trump get us into? You, him engaging in the conflict specifically in the context of Russia, the four to fifty percent increase in the military drone strikes, right? Those are conflicts he got us engaged in. The Iran, yeah. he assassinated a top military general. These are all conflicts okay, between military powers that he engaged in. Okay, so so a conflict's not a war. I just explained what a war is. There's a difference between a conflict and a war, right? So uh, an assassination is not a war, right? An assassination is assassination. A war is when we are going to send our men and women over to fight, or when other countries are sending their men and women over to fight another military power. Define war again, please. An armed conflict between two military powers. You said powers. it's not a conflict, but but it's a conflict? I said an armed conflict between two military Yeah, and you understand that drones are arms. That's an armed there's conflict no, between regions. When Trump drone strikes or bombs General Soleimani, that's an armed conflict. They then responded, okay? We that's did not literally an armed war. conflict between we did governments. We not end up in a war. Look, we did not end up in a war with Iran. So then what do you fucking mean by war? An armed conflict between two militaries. And those were armed, armed conflicts war, between dude. two militaries. Smart for this. They it's were armed, armed conflicts. Conflict hey, hey, Mark, 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 they were armed conflicts between two militaries, okay? Uh, so by your definition, they were wars. We did not fight Iran. That is not true. They've had responses specifically to military tar uh, op uh, targets in the region that were the U.S.'s because of the, the targeting of General Soleimani. Okay? They have they, had subsequent responses. They, they fired back one day and did nothing. Dude, oh my right? god. They literally so, blew So we took out an objective, which was a very high-value objective. And they took out objectives too. Okay? Yeah, so what? You're, you, what? They didn't accomplish anything. They didn't do nothing. I forget what they bombed. I can check again if you'd like me to. Yeah, they, 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 they lobbed a couple of attacks at some bases that shot down some missiles. Like they so, did so again, that's that's literally conflict. That's armed conflict between no, military. No, that's not their military. That is power. armed conflict between military. If you can't acknowledge that, I'm just going to go to the next person. It's not that's a just, war, dude. Dude, it's this not is, a war. There's an dude, established Based upon, based upon your definition, it literally was. It was an armed conflict between two governments. Okay. Why did we strike him? Was it an armed conflict? It wasn't new. Was it an armed conflict? I mean, I guess I guess you could call it an armed conflict if we use. And it was between two governments. But it's not new. So was the conflict specifically new in the sense that they literally assassinated the top military general? 
That is a new thing it's to do. Increasing the military we... drone strikes by 450%. That is a new thing. Okay. No, it's not. And okay, well, Ukraine and, and we were fighting and, a war. We were fighting a war. We were literally. Mark, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to go on to the next person. Ukraine and Palestine. Neither of those are new by by based on your own definition. Then. Well, they are. It okay. started on October seventh. No, it didn't, dumbass. It literally has been happening for fucking generations. Uh, I told you already earlier in this conversation, there's been an illegal occupation. There has literally been apartheid. There has been control over this region by Israel for fucking generations. I already told you this. We already went over this, and you still didn't engage with reality. They were not fighting a war between their military powers. What do you, based upon your definition, absolutely was a fucking war. I mean, them lobbing uh, missiles over the Iron Dome and the missiles getting shot down. I mean, okay. And why are but, they lobbing missiles? Because but, of the but, fucking but occupation, Israel, the illegal but, occupation and the war crimes that Israel's committed. But Israel wasn't firing missiles back at them. Dude, are you, they were literally bombing Palestinians for how fucking long? They were occupying that region? What are you talking about? From 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 what I and you can correct me if I'm wrong. They fired back at the points from where missiles were fired at them. All right. Only, specifically, only. No other places. No, it no is not. It is not points. only at places in which they are, were fired at. They have been bombing like hospitals and schools, and they're arguing because Hamas is in those regions. But they have imaging and technology that allows for them to see who is in particular regions. And that seventy percent of the deaths have been women and children. Okay, right, so, non so non Hamas so, targets. Right. So, so that means that they're very fucking bad at it. Right, so a missile would come over. Do you think it's Do you think it's justified to kill three American citizens to kill one terrorist? Do I think it's justified? No, absolutely not. Okay, if you don't think that's justified to kill three American citizens for one terrorist, why do you think it's okay to three kill three Palestinian citizens for one well, terrorist? I might. Well, hold on. So, so maybe if you worded it in that way, right? Because that was not the same issue, right? So, if uh, let's just choose a country that's not involved, right? Let's just say uh, uh, Denmark, right? If it if there's a Denmark terrorist who's responsible for taking a bunch of American lives, would I think that the uh, collateral the collateral damage of three other Danish would be worth taking out that terrorist, then in that case, I would say that probably, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know what fucking Denmark would say to that? That sucks. They would say, go fuck yourself, okay? Oh, That's what Denmark would say. Get a grip, dude. Any yeah. other country would not say it's justified to do that. Think about your own fucking citizens. Three American citizens or one terrorist. Yeah, no, we wouldn't like that, right? That's why we. Yeah, would yeah, you wouldn't like it. So why, why do you justify it for Palestinians? Uh, well, I didn't. I just said Denmark to to make it. Uh, I'm, no, I'll give it to America because you don't right? care enough about Denmark, apparently. So no, no. let's talk about let's talk about the American <laughs> citizens. Three American citizens. Would you give up three American citizens for this? It, and I'm not an American. Where are you from? Well, well, you're 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 saying. Do you live in the U.S., live? Mark? You're saying would we want Mark, to do you live in the US right now? People, yes. Okay, so you are an American. Right. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, what you're saying would be would it be okay for Israel to unalive three Israelis to take out one terrorist who's a attacking them, right? I'm that asking would be you more... so that you can answer the damn question, bro. You're just like being so annoying. Well, no, I'm going to ask you, know, you the question you... one more time. If you don't answer, I'm just going to go on to the next person. I'm I'm sick of asking you the same question over and over again. Well, because your 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 question is disingenuous, dude. I mean, how, how is it disingenuous? Because you're asking me if 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 I'm fighting an enemy, right? If I would be okay killing my own people to take out that enemy, which is not the same thing. So you're 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 like I don't even know what you're trying to do. It's silly, dude. Like make it like what it actually is. So if it was my enemy and it was their people, then yeah, in that case, I would be like, yeah, three of theirs is worth getting out that one guy who's going to try to unalive even more of us. But I wouldn't be okay with saying. So, yeah. so would you? Would you? See, would you be okay with killing three American citizens then? I wouldn't. I already answered that. Okay. So then, why would you be okay with killing three Palestinians? So if so if if it is the case that the Palestinians are attacking me, then that is what a war is. Their collateral damage. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want collateral damage on my own citizens to take out their points. But it, let's I mean, say there were American citizens doing. America was fighting a different country, 
mm-hmm. right? In Russia, and you're you're in Russia, and you're thinking about this. Would you give up three American citizens for one uh, for one terrorist? I mean, it would have to be a high value terrorist. Like it would have to be. Oh, okay. So in the same type of way that you're like, oh, it needs to be a very high value one. Well, wouldn't you say the same thing in this scenario? So what you're doing is you're dehumanizing Palestinians. No, you don't I'm, give Palestinians. Can I please finish? You give Palestinians less value than you give other humans. Not and at all. that I think is crazy because well, in the same way that, let me f- please finish Mark. Okay. In the same way, I know you, you, you're not letting me finish, right? But I would love to, right? Uh, please, like, uh, again, uh, I wait, hold up. Can you say it one more time, the last thing? Because I, I just lost what I was saying because I had to, like, go over it, like, a few times. What I was saying? Yeah, say what you were saying. I was saying that um, if it's the enemy, their citizens are worth the collateral damage to take out one. Oh, sorry, there we go. I remember now. So you're dehumanizing Palestinians. You're giving human Palestinians that are less value than you give other uh, types of humans, like Americans, in the scenario. Because again, you wouldn't be okay with giving up Americans, right? But you would be okay with giving up Palestinians. You didn't ask the question of, oh, are these high value targets? You just said, oh, they're Hamas. Got to take them out, right? Even though seventy percent of the deaths in, in the context of Palestine have been literal women and children. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean. Y- Absolutely. So, like, I, I, I don't agree that I'm devaluing uh, Palestinians or any group of people. I think that it is the case that when you're fighting a war, that there is always collateral damage. We killed a lot of innocent people trying to liberate Europe. And that's fucking wrong, right? So the U.S. killing innocent fought. people in, in the Middle East is wrong. So you're saying we shouldn't have fought against the Yahtzees? Wait, I, I agree killing Yahtzees. How did we kill innocent civilians killing Yahtzees? Uh, we bombed, we carpet bombed all, like, all over the place. Like, you don't think that there was innocent casualties in, in World War II on all sides? Like, of course there wait, was. Wait, wait, obviously there was. We're talking intended, though. J- Jack, thank you so much for the galaxy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, it. Got it. All right, all right. I get what you're saying. So you're saying These, these are intended people, because because people, they, they know who are in these places. Right. Well, we knew that there was people. And in also, those. right, Good. I but definitely don't agree with all the actions the U.S. did in the context of World War II. Like Hiroshima, I disagree with. Nagasaki, I disagree with. The the, the uh, Tokyo fires, I disagree with. I definitely, there are plenty of things in World War II I would disagree with the U.S. on behalf of. Yeah, I think, I think all of us today would have issues with some of the actions of, you know, of our government, especially in relation to Japan. But on the other hand, I don't know. I, I Look, I don't honestly know, because if they bombed Pearl Harbor in my day, I'd probably be like, yeah, let's get them. You know, I, I, I can't say for sure where I would fall. But I can say this, that casualties of war is is normal. War sucks. War is an awful thing. And it should be the case that we try to avoid it by making peace treaties. And I think that there has been many attempts to do that over there so like again it depends on where you're getting your information from that you might have a a, a differing opinion i know that i don't know enough to be solid on any of it and i also know that there's not a reliable source that okay we're just going over things we already did um i appreciate you coming up though mark all right bud you have a good night appreciate it all right let's go to the next person everyone only send a guest request if you will vote for trump in 2024 and you have not been here before we are just looking for some new bit debaters everyone keep tapping that screen let's try to get to 500,000 likes everyone uh i don't know if i'll go to my other account i i'm not sure if this one is sending out yo what's up how old are you hello yo what's up can you hear me yeah how old are you i'm 35 for sure will you vote for trump in 2024 yes sir and why is that (laughs) <laughs> he's the last stand. Because he's the last stand? How so? He's the last stand. So he's he's looking at the mountain for what it is, right? So let's take the mountain of debt, for example. Sorry, I'm driving. I didn't think you were acting. Oh, you're acting driving? Cool. I got to go to the next person. Okay, cool. TikTok, go ahead. TikTok TOS. Uh, let's get the next person up here. Only send a guest request if you will vote for Trump in 2024. Canister, thank you so much for the Corgi. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, chat, should we go over to the other account or what should we do, everyone? I'm not quite sure, to be honest with y'all. I'm not sure if it's sending out or not. I mean, I think it could be. Appreciate the Corgi. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Ding Dong. Yo, what's up? How old are you? Hello? 
All right, let's try this next person. This person's not here. Only send a guest request if you will vote for Trump in 2024. See, I think it would be fine, but like I, I don't see any guest requests really. You, what's up? How old are you? Yo, I'm 25. For sure. Will you vote for Trump in 2024? Yeah. Why so? Uh, man, I just love uh, I just love Orange Man, but uh, no. Uh, honestly, I think the uh, state of living was much better under uh for u.s citizens under trump i think that the economy was better and i think that uh just a lot of uh just american life was better under trump um so uh again how do you know that's caused specifically by trump uh i don't know specifically uh if everything that uh was affected that what that that caused that was uh by trump i just know that it was at the time it was where we were just in a better state we were just in a better state so again if you don't know anything that caused that you can't attribute that to trump similarly there was 14.7 percent unemployment under trump's administration do you attribute that to trump uh no it depends uh, you know there, there, there's, so then why do you attribute this to the, biden so the, there's there's other the other sectors of government that also have dictation over that Wait, sorry, say that one more time. There's other branches of government that have dictation over that. Other branches of the government that have dictation over what? I apologize. Uh, employment or unemployment. Um, yeah. This, it's not gonna be, it's going to be... Wait, I'm so sorry. Maybe I got lost of where we were in the conversation, but why'd you bring that up? I didn't bring up unemployment. You did. Okay, can you like restate? Sorry, I apologize. I don't. Uh, I, lo- I must have lost where we were in the conversation. <laughs> what? Uh, fine. No, that's fine. So we were. So what I said was, I thought that the state of our living was better. You brought up uh, unemployment, and you said that. What, oh, what, I brought up unemployment. I prove, yeah, I brought up unemployment as it relates to showing you that right. Just because something is associated doesn't mean it's caused by that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, but, so th- that's all I was demonstrating there. So just because these two are associated doesn't mean one calls the other. How do you know that Biden is liable for this, for the states of our uh, our economy, like uh, inflation getting worse? Uh, I don't know. I, I honestly, I can't say specifically, but I am just going to say that the, the current, the situation was worse and the situation just is worse. That's just what I know. I know that it is worse under Biden. I don't know what specifically causes it. I can't trace it down. There's a lot of factors that come into this. Okay, well, then you can't blame Biden for it if you don't know what it was caused by. Right. I can't outright blame Biden for all these specific things, but I, I can say that I'm living under worse conditions under Biden. Yeah, but that's not a good reason to vote for Trump. I think that's reason enough. Um, why is that reason enough? So would you say uh, yeah. Trump's economy was bad during COVID? Would you say that then it would be reason to vote for Biden in 2020? It was still better than what it was. It, 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 it dropped. No, no, it was time. bad. It was really bad. It, uh, that's why that's actually one of the reasons why Trump lost is because people associate that economy with Trump specifically uh, and Trump's re- response to COVID, by the way, of course. Right. Not the just but, random spike in, in votes when mail-ins came in. Yeah. Yeah, mail-in ballots uh, are historically not fraudulent. This clearly was not fraudulent. Right, and and, and when you look at the data, it Can just jumps right above right above the uh, Trump's line. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so th- none of those were like not supposed to occur, right? That's just counting of mail-in ballots. Uh, the same thing happened for Republicans. Uh, if you want to look at the the context of mail-in ballots, that's because of COVID, right? Um, I mean, I that that's like to be expected. I'll ask you this question: How did Trump vote? How did Trump what? Vote. Uh, Trump himself won mm-hmm. a, one out of the millions. Uh, he probably did a mail-in because he's an old, oldster. Oh, was that fraudulent? Uh, I don't believe so. No. Okay. I don't. I don't think. But I, but my suggestion is it's not as easy to create uh, fla- fraudulent. Uh, votes if it were if they were not mail-ins. I think that mail-ins are more. Uh, typically could be more fraudulent. Yeah, so again, I'm not saying this, everyone is. CISA.gov though. indicated this is the most secure election in record history, so the lowest fraud rate proportionally. What's that? 
So lowest fraud rate proportionally was was what in 2020 in 2020 most secure election in recorded history how do we know that cisa.gov indicated that there were also 60 court cases plus that didn't indicate sufficient evidence to overturn the election 17 in which had uh federally appointed judges specifically by trump okay right so that yeah and that's not one of my main points I, i brought it up but um whether or not it was, uh, it doesn't really pertain to what, whether or not I would prefer Biden over Trump. How so? Uh, well, the 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 case and well, the course of how we're, our voting happens, right? I don't care about whether or not at all. Uh, that's not what I'm talking. Basically, I'm saying that's off topic. I'm not talking about um whether or not the like what you know. I think that's important. It's not off topic. He has denied the election for the past few years with no sufficient evidence to indicate that. Do you not see that to be an issue? No, I don't. You don't. So uh, you don't think that's uh, you don't think that's uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, like an, a threat to our democracy? Is it, you don't think he's a traitor for that undermining our democratic institutions? I think he's bringing up questions that people need to ask. And I think that there needs to be speculation over these things. He's saying there's sufficient evidence to indicate that the election was lost, or I mean, I mean stolen, and that um, he'll only accept the election results if he wins. He said that. So right, but it's not right, but it's not posing a serious threat because, like you said, there's been over 60 court cases and there's been this whatnot. And I mean, you can say things, but it, I, I don't think it's a threat because it has to go through the legal system. Uh, so again, like a serious threat, obviously has to go, but like how many people, literally tens of millions of people believe the election was stolen in this country. Now appreciate the confetti. Thank you so much for no sufficient reason. Philip, thank you for the $10 on cash app. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate it. I think that we all have beliefs that people can deem threatening to democracy, but whether or not this uh, is legitimately threatening to democracy, you understand that this is, this is literally a fundamental point towards denying democracy, denying election results is, is a right, fundamental point. If you can be that. proven wrong, then that, then that, that still stands. He was proven the wrong. Case. The court yeah, cases, that still the, the recounts, I'm not, I'm not. the, the audits, right? All of these indicate he's wrong. Trump yeah, either it, appointed the corrupt judges or he lost the election. He's been, he lost the election and he's been denying the election results for the past few years and you don't care. Yeah, no, I, I don't care because it's, you can be critical about something, but you don't have to be, that doesn't mean you're a threat. Uh, so you can be critical of something that doesn't mean that you're a threat. What do you mean by that? So you can be critical of how the, the voting process, you can, uh, you can have your own assumptions. I'm not but, saying that, uh, but he's until, years after saying, the saying there's sufficient process, evidence, indicate, whether, whether or not it's proved or not, but it's years after he's saying that there's sufficient evidence to indicate that he won and there's not, he's literally lying. Okay. You don't care about that. So if, if I don't, <laughs> so, so Democrats just denying the results of the election, you wouldn't care. So what incentive do I have to accept the results of the election? If Biden loses, uh, if Biden None. wins, I have no fucking incentive because you decided in the election prior. Oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to think it's completely okay for Trump to deny the election results. So if Biden now denies the election results, there's no issue with that. That's fucking crazy. That d- destroys democracy. Right. You setting precedents like that should be argued the, against. About 2016, when uh, Clinton was doing the same thing, this is something that's happened before. I would argue against that, but she she conceded the next day. I don't know about that. She but did again. You, like you're she saying, conceded the next bringing day. up that it was a threat to democracy. So there were several. So you have all these people, right? You had all these Democrats thinking the same thing, and you, I, I could call that a threat. I'm not. I'm not still standing here to this day calling that. She a threat. conceded the next day. But it was the same thing with the other. And I side would call well. that a threat, actually. Huh? I would call that a threat, but she conceded the next day. The fact Whatever. that you can't call that a threat is ridiculous, honestly. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if she conceded the other day, dude. What she did. She did. She I did? I can bring it up, yeah. I'll do it, too. Um, oh, if you're going to do it, you can just find it. It's going to be the first thing that comes up, pretty much. Uh...
but also that's not Biden. Biden's Biden's the one running. Um, right, no, but again, I'm Trump is so running. Comparison. I'm just making it as a comparison. I'm not saying it's the, the same. I mean, it is the same party. So, but I would say Trump is running. So there's a bit of a distinction there. True. Uh, I look it up and there's tons of stuff about Trump above it. So, uh, let me just see. Hillary Clinton maintains 2016 election. We still don't know what really happened. Uh, that's just a title though. I'm just going to scroll down. I don't see anything about her conceding though. I can pull it up if you'd like. Yeah, I actually don't see anything about her conceding. I got you. Uh, Nathan, thank you for the, the $2. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Nathan. All right, 2016. Uh, the first thing that comes up is Hillary concedes. What what, what did you look up? Uh, Hillary concedes 2016. Politico comes up. NPR comes up. The Guardian comes up. Washington Post. CBS. Liberal, Wall Street liberal, Journal. Liberal. CNN. Time Magazine. Los Angeles Times. Right. Liberal media. Liberal media. Liberal media. These are videos of, of this happening. Reuters. What did she say? Uh, that they need to keep an open mind. I don't think she conceded. She literally it says conceded. That we still do, it says that we, sh we owe him an open mind. I don't yeah, she conceded. I don't she, conceded. she conceded. and Yeah. When? What did she say? So, Hillary Clinton delivered an emotional address Wednesday channeling her devastating loss to encourage her supporters to give President-elect Donald Trump a chance to lead and inspire them to never give up in what likely marked the sunset of her political career. Political career. I don't see anything about her conceding on what she said. Clinton privately conceded the election to Trump on a phone call early Wednesday morning, but held off formally doing so before thousands of supporters who were gathered inside the glass ceiling of this awaiting the election results we hours later last night i congratulated donald trump on in and offered to work with him on behalf of our country clinton said later uh wednesday in her concession i hope that he will be a successful president for all americans this is not the outcome we wanted or worked so hard for and i'm sorry that we did not win this elections for the values we share and the vision we hold for this country what the fuck are you talking about? This is literally. So she's not ridiculous. taking back what so her claim. So that you you kind of just she literally lying. she literally claimed. You did not concede lying? what she said. So you're not. I am no, not lying. Saying is that she said so? That's now so she's ridiculous for you to claim that, that I'm lying there. Like I literally I am, she I, she's doing this ridiculous. in a concession. Sure. So yeah, what I'm you're just bullshitting. I'm saying, Honestly, yeah. it's stupid as fuck. No, because you, you made the claim. That. No, because you made the claim that she conceded on what she previously said. This is conceded. Said. She, yeah, she literally conceded that that she lost the election. That's what I was saying. No, all she said was that we we owe him apology. That this is unrelated stuff. No, it's not. She said. No, she, she, she said. said I hope he will be a successful lie, president for all Americans. That means she acknowledges that he's president, right? Yeah, this doesn't mean that I I I I lied about uh, it was all a fraud. It was Russia or whatever. That she didn't say that. Uh, again, she didn't take back those claims that she made. Bro, she literally she literally conceded the election. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. So you, she didn't you, take back what agree? she said about the, the the falsehoods that she made, the claims that she made about Russia, about. Uh, colluding with russia having them hack the election whatnot uh, again you can say that that doesn't and i will agree right you could definitely you know add more to it and talk about that that's but, all i was like, saying too so yeah so yeah but like again point. that doesn't mean that she didn't concede here i think it does because what what bro she, it's like the ridiculous claim that she made was not taken back the claims that she, she said was not retracted Dude, I said she conceded the election. That's what I said. Yeah, You're talking about like retracting she's just her statement. Acknowledging statements. the result of the election. That doesn't mean that. What she is a concession? Happened. What is a concession? You mean con well, conceding? Yeah. Tell me what it means. Uh, man, I don't know the the exact uh, definition. Conceding, I'll just, I'll, I'll say it for you. Uh, the, it's a verb. It means, oh gosh, 
Oh, admit to something is true or valid after first denying or resisting it. Donald, here's the quote. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. That's conceding. No, it's not. That is absolutely conceding. So admit that something is true. Well, yeah. Okay. So she, you're right. So she is. So, okay. So she is conceding. Okay. I'll give you that, but she is conceding, but she's not. So what I'm saying is that she's not taking back what she said, the falsehoods that she said about the election and how it that's was re that's recanting what she said prior again. She, this is literally a concession. She said, she said our loss, right? She acknowledges that she lost the election. Yeah. Okay. So if Trump were to acknowledge that he lost the election, that means he takes it back everything he said. Uh, yeah, that would mean he's that would mean he's conceding the election. He still hasn't done that. He that doesn't mean he recants I'm sure, it. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's multiple. Hey, times hey, you're misunderstanding. That the, doesn't the mean election. that doesn't mean they recanted, right? Um, uh, but uh, it does mean that they conceded. Yo, Michael, thank you so much for the $30 on Cash App. Thank you so much, Michael. Can we get a W, Michael, in the comment section? Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you so much. Well, if I, I appreciate look into that. I have another quote here. Many of you are at the beginning of your pro uh, professional, public, and political careers. You will have successes and setbacks, too. This loss hurts, but please never stop believing what fighting for, what's right, is uh, it's, is worth it. I appreciate the handout. Thank you. Um, yeah. She admits that it's a loss there. That's a concession. Admitting it's a loss. Like I said, I keep I keep saying something different. So she's not taking back what she said about the election being fraudulent. Do you agree this is I'm a concession? Sure that, I'm sure that if I were to go into the details and I were to search hard enough that there would be also be Trump acknowledging I'm asking if you, can, if you think this is a concession. And conceding. Dude. Huh? What do you think? Based upon the definition of concession, this is a concession. Okay. Yeah, it's a concession. I already acknowledge okay, that. Okay, so thank you. All right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll admit that, but you're just using that word to to basically vaguely. Trump. Uh, Trump never conceded, right? Not. So we're we're saying two different things. I'm not. I don't care about the concession at this point. Like I said, I'll repeat it again. She didn't take back what she said about the uh, election being fraudulent. Again, so you're talking about recanting. Okay, so if you're going to talk about yeah, if you're going to talk about that specifically, uh, I agree. Again, you could have done that more. Yeah. That doesn't change anything. He's still a threat to democracy. <laughs> I mean, you can deem him a threat to society. I don't see that that way, though. Yeah, him denying the election results just isn't an issue. You wouldn't care if Biden denied the results? Appreciate the hanging no, Thank you. Yeah, because you're crazy. You're literally going to fucking destroy our country. I'm not trolling. This is literally going to destroy our country. People believing shit like this. Okay, I'll, do, I'll destroy the do you understand? Do you understand what, how, how much democracy is necessary to limit tyranny? Dude, I'm so destructive. For thinking something. Yeah, for yeah, there, there are obviously things you can believe that are destructive. What? That, that sure. is a dumb I, thing I for you to say. I hold values that it depends on whether I act in honor or not, but I can hold these Yeah, and you're acting myself. on it right now by telling everyone that you believe this and you think it's okay to believe this. I didn't, I never said if it was okay or not. You were saying that there's no issue with, again, them denying the election results with no sufficient evidence. Yeah, there's not. You can hold values. There is absolutely an issue there because, again, no, <laughs> there is no sufficient evidence. Okay. And if we can just believe things with no sufficient evidence, well, then do you think it's justified for people to believe that Trump is a rapist? Uh, yeah, people can hold these values. So it's justified. Ju you're adding the word justified. I never said it was justified or not. You can have an opinion on something. And you don't think it's harmful, right, for people to believe things without evidence? So again, if again, if everyone who's a Democrat just doesn't believe the election results in 2016 and 2024, if Trump wins, well, then you think there's no issue with that. If we all just deny the results, of the election, every election in the future, you have no issue with that. No, it, it's happened several times throughout the throughout all of democracy. We've had. Can you give me that. one time it's happened in American history? Yeah, 2016 election. <laughs> that is not the time. It, no, that's not when it happened. Yeah, there, Again, was, a, there was a huge. That was not years huge after people. With, there was with not the, years after the, tens of millions of people claiming that. Huge 
there was a huge issue. It was all over the media. They were saying that Russia was colluding with the election and whatnot. It was no. Huge, they said there's huge. an investigation. It was huge. Yeah. No. It was. It was. There was and an by, investigation. And it a there, I don't have an issue sitting cool, here today cool saying the same. I don't have an issue with investigation. What? I don't have an issue with investigations. Yeah, me neither. Okay. This is I'm not, not just I, an. I don't, I don't have any issue. Cool dog. This is not just an investigation. This is him denying it when there's no sufficient evidence after the investigations have occurred. Okay. Okay. So if people were still claiming the election was stolen in 2016, right? You don't see any issue with that after there's literally sufficient evidence to indicate that, that, that there was not sufficient Russian, Russian collusion to overturn the election. I think that's harmful. Okay. Yeah. Do you not? Uh, no, I don't. You can think that it is, but I don't think it is. Do you care about American democracy? Uh, I care about it being run correctly, and I think that critiquing it, whether it, or not it can't be run qu correctly if important. dumbasses like you believe this shit. Okay, you literally believe there's no what issues. Call I called you a dumbass. If you believe that there's no issue with literally people denying the election results, right, and not accepting the results of fair and democratic elections, well, then we're going to have no movement in this country because there's no policy changes, no movement because you don't fucking accept the results of the other side. You're just giving an incentive to the other side to fuck you over. Okay, you understand we have to have rules. We have to have systems in place to be able to deal with the shit. Otherwise, it leads to people fucking each other over consistently over and over again. You can disagree, but this is crazy. This leads to dismantling of the country. Yeah, no, I do disagree. I don't think it's that much big of an issue. Going to respond to anything I have to say? With, you're just going to say that? That's it? That's all you have to say? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can make it out to be this this awful, horrible thing. I don't think it is. Yeah, but you have no response. You have no response. All you're saying is that I just don't think it's a horrible thing. Well, there's not. You, it's not like you're asking me a question to respond to. I'm just saying that you, you kind of just had your spiel, and so I'm just acknowledging that. Okay, but you don't want to give any response. Response to what? Anything I've just said. I gave you reasoning well, why it is the case that you are engaging in something that we consider harmful, and then you're just literally right saying, "Oh, I don't think it's harmful." That's not a response. That's not providing reasoning. Yeah, I, do. I I have been providing my reasoning this whole time, but that actually is a response. It does it does count it as a response. No, you're I'm not giving any not. reasoning. You think it is? I think it's not. It's 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 just where we stand. Yeah, you're not giving reasoning though. You got flagged for civic and election election integrity, and I didn't get flagged. Honestly, to be totally real, I deserve to be flagged for that. But um, he should not have gotten flagged for civic and election integrity. That's such bullshit. That's such bullshit. Yo, what's up? How old are you? I'm sixty. Yeah, are you going to vote for Trump in 2024? Absolutely. For sure. Why so? Because he can bring uh, the economy back to halfway normal, bring down inflation and uh, interest rates on homes and peace. Interest rates have nothing to do with the president. Um, sure inflation. Does. No, it doesn't. Sure it does. All of it. If he's going to come in and he's not going to do it like he said in two days. But he's going to stop the war in Ukraine. Hey, Dave. Um, no, he's not uh, one. Uh, but like interest rates have nothing to do with the president. Well, sure it does. When all of our money's going somewhere, that's where the interest rates come from. Um, no. Um, what is an interest rate? The interest rate is because the economy is terrible and you got to pay more money. No. What is an interest rate? Right now on a home, it's 7.2%. No, I'm not rate? asking you what the percentage is. What is an interest rate? I don't get what you're saying. I'm just an average American. Do you, do you know what an interest rate is? No, tell me, Parker. Okay, so an interest rate is going to be like, say, on a loan you get. You get a loan, you have this particular percent interest rate, which means every single year, right, it is the case that your 
uh, amount that you pay is going to increase by this particular amount because you were able to borrow these funds, okay? So the interest rate is influenced by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not controlled by the president. Historically speaking, we can actually point to Trump's administration when Trump was begging the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, to lower the interest rates prior to COVID. So if, if it was controlled by the president, how come he didn't lower it himself? It was 3.2% when he was president. Yeah, interest rates, again, are have nothing to do with the president. It has everything to do with the Federal Reserve and how they influence the rates. And the rates are being influenced to be that way because of price instability, because there's inflation. It is the case that they adopt an, inf uh, an influence into the increase of interest rates to be able to decrease aggregate demand. Interest rates are drove up by money that we spend. No. Absolutely is a thousand percent. No. I'm 60 years old. I've lived a lot longer than you. You might be a lot more book smart than me, but I've lived a life of hard knots and I've seen it go. And when Joe Biden took office, everything went through the roof. You can blame, blame it on the pandemic all you want. That does have stuff to do with it. No, it has mainly but, to do with gas prices. But I'm telling you right now, if you the war in Ukraine comes to an end, all that stuff's going to slowly come down. It's not going to come down like he said, I'll end it in two days, because sometimes he says things that are absolutely ridiculous, and that's one of them. But once the war in Ukraine has ended, and we're not worried about China invading Taiwan, and the Israel thing going on comes to an end, I think everything's going to start slowly coming back down. And I'm not being argumentative. I'm just giving you my opinion on what I see through my eyes. I'm not very book smart. I'll tell you that now. Yeah, if, if you give up part of Ukraine to Russia, what is China going to think about Taiwan? We're not giving up part of Russia. Of, Ukraine to ta Taiwan. We uh, no, Ukraine wouldn't go to Taiwan. U Ukraine to Russia. to Russia. And the, the yes, under Trump's policy, he's advocated that he would give up parts of Ukraine f uh, to end the war. That ain't what he's going to do. He's not. That's gonna what he's on. advocated. He's not. He's going to put sanctions on Russia, and Russia's going to stop. We already have had sanctions on Russia. Yeah, but Biden's weak. He's not doing it the way he's supposed to do it. Just he's like doing China. exactly what he should do. How much it. money are we getting from China now? And what? When Trump was there. Getting from them and what? In sanctions on their, their exports coming in here. Sanctions? What sanctions do we have on China? I'm talking about where China was paying us billions of dollars. Are you talking about tariffs? It, yeah, tariffs. I'm sorry. Yeah, those tariffs you. negatively yeah. impacted American consumers and producers, right? They in, There were subsequent increases China put on our goods, right? So uh, producers, uh, you know, selling to China had to pay more. And then consumers here in America have to pay more because it is the case that uh, their, uh, their consumer products would cost more due to the tariffs. Well, I don't, I don't know about all of that, but I know that Putin... And Wu John Ching and the president of Mexico, whatever his name Who? is. Wait, what was the I first name you said? Book smart. The president of China. They don't respect Joe Biden. They think he's Xi, Xi Jinping. Yeah, Xi Jinping. Thank you. And the president of Mexico supposedly is bribing President Biden. They don't respect him. How do you know that he's bribing them? They had an article on CNN talking about they was trying to bribe him. Trying to doesn't mean he is. Well, I, I gave you my two cents. You're a lot smarter than me, but I'm using just common sense. Yeah, I am too. If you look at interest rates, interest rates are influenced by the Federal Reserve. That's not Donald Trump. If you want to look at uh, inflation, that's going to be related to the price of oil. Appreciate the duck. Thank you so much. Which is going to relate to the Russia-Ukraine situation, which would have happened regardless of Trump in, in office because we're getting less Russian oil now. Same with uh, Europe. And then also uh, uh, as it relates to OPEC limiting their distribution of oil worldwide. Those things reduce supply of oil, therefore increase price. So... When Trump was in office, how much was we buy, selling the oil for versus buying it? Say that one more time. When Trump was in office, 
he stockpiled our oil reserve. Don't quote me on this, but I thought it was like $40 a drum. And then Biden was buying it back from Russia for $100 a drum to get our oil re- to our get our oil reserve back to normal. Wait, we didn't get we didn't buy where we bought oil reserves from Russia when from whatever country we bought it from. What? We sold it for 40 and bought it back for 100. No, that's not what we did. So, uh what are you talking about? The US we, no, we bought we bought these oil reserves under Trump's administration and then we used them to lower prices in the US and to lower global commodity prices. So we sent them to places around the world to lower the prices. It didn't lower them. What's up? It didn't lower them. I live in Ohio. I just paid three forty-seven a gallon. Yeah, it, it lowered for temporary months because it doesn't lower for permanent. Because it's yeah, it about it's supply related. The election coming up. That's when it gets lowered, my opinion. But well, anyway. it probably will get lower near the election because there's been more time, but. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you letting me come and talk a little bit. I'll look at the interest rates and all that. I have a question before you do. How do you feel about the fact that Trump's a proven sexual abuser, a proven fraudster, someone who's been denying the election for the past few years, someone who's engaged in religious persecution by saying that there should be a, a ban of all Muslims coming into this country, things like that? He didn't say all Muslims. Yeah, you want me to hear, you want me to play the clip? You don't have to play the clip. You can look up whatever clip you want to. No, it's literally of Trump saying it, but okay. What do you feel about Joe Biden talking about racial jungle? If you ain't black, you don't vote for me. I think Uh, both Trump and Biden are racist. And okay. And what about Biden saying him and Obama don't approve of same sex marriage? And now Uh, he's changed that view. And uh, obviously I disagree with that. Um, So what's it called? Would you like to hear the video of Trump calling for it? No, I'm okay with it. You're okay with it? Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah, I believe when he said that is when they were, have there was terrorists, tariffs. Terrorists. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's not just like specific people or terrorists. That's people who are Muslim. That's religious persecution. Total and complete shutdown of Muslims coming into this country. Do you think people who are Muslims are dangerous? Mm, uh, there could be, but I don't know that. For there a could fact. be. Wait, so wait, wait, but the, but there is a higher rate of terrorists in the of U.S. citizens. Well, then they're dangerous. Yeah. U.S. citizens are dangerous. There's a lot of U.S. citizens that are dangerous. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you assume every U.S. citizen is dangerous, okay? Same right. way you shouldn't assume every fucking person coming from the Middle East is dangerous, right? Or who is Muslim is dangerous. Those are crazy things to believe. God, so yeah, how yeah. do you feel about the fact that he's a proven sexual abuser? About the fact that he's a fraudster? How you do you feel about he, those things? You mean that he was accused of it? No, he was proven to be a sexual abuser. He was proven to be a fraudster. He was held liable for sexual abuse. He was held liable for business fraud. He was held liable with no jury. That was a jury in the context of the sexual abuse case. (laughs) A jury indicated that he engaged in sexual abuse. Oh, my God. Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. And for the fraud case, he literally said, right, that that the building he had was like 30,000 square feet when it was 11. Okay? That is textbook fraud for him to devalue it on his taxes and overvalue it to the banks. Textbook fraud. He committed a crime. So who lost money? It doesn't matter if anyone lost money. He committed a crime. 
I sell something on Marketplace for $50 and I pay $10 for it. Am I for Appreciate it, Doc. Fraud? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Again, that's not undervaluing it on your taxes and overvaluing it to the bank. The banks loved him. They still Regardless, it's still fraud. Him. For example, right? If someone drinks and drives, right? Did they commit a crime? Sure they do. Okay, even if they didn't hit someone? Sure they do. Okay, so even if you didn't hit anyone, even if you didn't harm anyone, you still committed a crime. You did, but you get a lawyer. So Trump a committed a crime even though he didn't out. harm anyone. He didn't harm anybody. Absolutely no one. Yeah, but he also committed a crime. Yeah. All of that will come out. It did already. Yeah. How do you explain uh, Joe Biden's niece getting a hundred thousand dollars? I don't. I never heard about that. Of course you don't. Can you show you me where I can find that? Yeah, your, your ears are plugged from that. Dave, can you just show me where I can find that? I don't. I'm not tech savvy. I can't pull that stuff up on my so phone. So it's, it's it's a trust his, me, bro, his, Dave. His niece or granddaughter. Hey, hey Dave, did you did you did you hear about the three billion dollars that Donald Trump Jr. got from China? Probably. I was trolling, dude. I was I was showing you a joke because you just made the, just some random claim. What do you mean, it's probably, bro? This, this, this is why we have people voting for 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 Trump is because they're not willing to look up evidence. Okay. There's nothing that you can hardly look up on the internet where everything's the same. It's 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 really no, different. you can't find anything on the internet because I guarantee if you look up stuff, you can't find it if it's if you believe it. I guarantee it. There are plenty of things that you'd look up and you couldn't find, I promise you, and you believe them. All right, Parker. Well, thanks for your time. And I, I didn't mean to be disrespectful if I was, and maybe I'm not up to date on absolutely everything, but I know I would never, ever vote for Joe Biden. All right. Thank you. Let's go to the next person, y'all. Only send a guest request, if you will. Vote for Trump in 2024, y'all. We are just looking for some debates. Yo, it's a Hello? How old are you? Hello? How old are you? 19. Will you vote for Trump in 2024? Uh, no. Okay. Well, mostly because... What'd you say? I, I, I didn't hear you there, man. You, you weren't a Trump supporter. Yo, it's a How old are you? 19. Uh, will you vote for Trump in 2024? Uh, I'm not voting. I just had a question. No, you're not. Next person. Only send a guest request if you will vote for Trump in 2024. You what's up? How old are you? Uh, 24. Will you vote for Trump in 2024? Um, if it's between Trump and Biden, yeah. Okay. Why so? Um, I just think there's a lot of issues right now that really need addressed, and I don't think that Biden is taking them seriously. Uh, what ones? The border would probably be the biggest one for me. What about the border? Well, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a disaster right now. Even, even they're admitting it now, right? What about the border? You don't know what's going on at the border? So what's bad about the border? What's bad about the border is just the the amount of legal crossings that are happening right now. Do you know how many there are? Well, I mean, within what time frame? Josh, I appreciate the duck. Thank you so much. Since 2022. Since 2022, I do not know the number since okay. 2022. But I know so that how can you make numbers million. that it's bad right now? I know that the, the number is in the millions of illegal crossing since uh, he took office. Oh, how do you know that if you don't have any numbers on it? You, you said specifically since 2022, what was the number? I don't know the number. I just know it's in the millions. since. Oh, there, there aren't numbers out. I haven't seen any. I mean, For I undocumented like crossings? No, you have, you have no clue. What do you mean by undocumented crossings? I have no clue how many undocumented people have come into the country since 2022. I have no reason, no evidence for that. Can you give me any evidence? I'm not talking about, I'm just saying illegal border crossings since yeah. Biden took off. And I'm asking number. you, do you have any evidence that that many people came in through illegal border crossings? 
You don't because there is nothing, no data points about undocumented immigration since 2022. Okay. There are encounters, right? But nothing about illegal or undocumented immigrants. I'm not necessarily saying illegal immigrants. I'm saying illegal crossings, right? There's there's a legal way to cross the border. I'm a U.S. citizen, but if I go into Mexico and then try to walk across uh, a place that's not a port of entry, that's illegal, right? That's an illegal crossing. Uh, not so necessarily, which, right? For example, right? There's an asylum process in the United States where you do not have to go through the context of a port of entry. And even if you do not go through the context of, context of a port of entry, it still is legal. Um. Not necessarily. Um, I, I see what you're getting at with that, but it's not necessarily the case. Uh, asylum is supposed to be claimed at a port of entry, technically. Um, but no. once, once, you, what, technically, that is the process. The asylum code does not indicate you need to do that. You can look it up. Uh, once did. you're in the, I've U- already read once, the asylum code, and it does not indicate you have to do that. When, when, once you're already in the U.S., yes, they will process you, but you are technically supposed to do it at a port of entry. That is true. Once they are in the U S yes, they're not, obviously not going to send it. Yeah, it doesn't say that in the asylum code. You should look it up. I have. Let's look it up again. Dude, I don't need to. I've already looked at the asylum code. It does not say you have to do so at a port of entry or even that you're supposed to. Do you mind if I look it up? Will you give me a yeah, second? Go for it. In the meantime, everyone keep tapping that screen. Let's run it up to 500,000 likes. Share the live as well, everyone. By the way, everyone, we are on this account on my sixth account because we are banned on the main account and because we were seeing if there's algorithm push on this account. I think there might be. I'm not quite sure, though. Uh, I'll have to check after the after I am done for today. But we've got about another hour and 30 minutes left on the live or so. So if you do have any questions, you can put in the comment section right now. If you want to support me, as always, Venmo, Cash App, in the bio, everyone. And also, everyone, tapping the screen does really help. I am banned on the main account until uh, until the, the 3rd of April. Uh, and my appeal was not approved on in 1969. Yes, you heard me say that correctly. The appeal was not approved. I appreciate it, Kelly. Thank you so much for the duck. In 1969. Appreciate the sweet memories. Thank you so much, Leah. Honestly, I'm not really finding anything that's like easy to look at. Um, I don't want to take a, like too much of your time without actually debating. Um, I have an article in front of me. But the way I understand it is you are supposed to claim asylum at a border. But regardless, I don't think it matters. Um, there's still issues with the way that it's, it's taking place right now. Yeah, the state of TikTok, everyone, by the way. State of TikTok, 1231-1969. So I must have watched the, the, the moon landing and then got banned. You know, I must have, that must have happened. It's crazy. It's crazy that the appeal was submitted almost almost like what what is that almost 55 years later wow you know it's crazy how technology works sorry can you say that one more time yeah i was just saying that i don't i'm not seeing anything that's like like just on the dot like the steps of claiming asylum i don't want to like read through an entire article while i'm wasting your time Uh, yeah no i just i just you can look up look it up later but I mean, I, I'm not sure. lying to you. I promise you, I, if, I'm not lying to you. But Drew, thank okay, you for the yeah, 99 I mean, cents. He said Parker regardless, before conception, for real. Regardless, uh, there's still issues with the way it's taking place. Regardless of where, where you're claiming asylum, it's still, uh, when we talk about, you know, someone claiming asylum in the United States, asylum is a, a certified thing, right? And most of the people that are claiming asylum don't necessarily have legitimate asylum claims. So what's the rate that, of an asylum uh, seeker being a, uh, sent back to their country uh it's hard it's it's hard to put a number on that because those are like you know court cases especially yeah, right now how back that they are. so what's the percentage because when i looked it, it up depend, it depends on nationality well it's well over a, it's a majority of individuals so a majority of individuals do not, do not get sent back therefore why would we assume here that these are like illegal or undocumented immigrants if we have no reason that's not uh that's not the numbers i see i, I when i looked it up when I've looked it up multiple times and, you know, there's not a lot of great resources on that type of thing, but from the numbers that I got, saw, we were looking at like up nearly 70% of asylum seekers have illegitimate cases, uh, cases for asylum. Oh, can status. you show me that? I, I don't have the article. Because the grant rate I think is completely different than that. If you, if you can show me your grant rate, then that would, I mean, it's, it's, it's all by like, um, by nation. So it's it's it just depends on the nation. And what are those nations? 
Um, well, obviously all nations. I'm not going to name all nations right now. I don't have a total though for everything. Oh, I thought you were saying that certain nations are processed at like super high rate, like their asylum claims. Do you want me to give an example? Yeah, I'm just saying like what countries are a high percentage of asylum claims are yeah, granted. For for example, uh, a high rate of of asylum cr- claims. Uh, well, there was one at seventy seven percent or seventy five percent here from Belarus. Belarus is a seventy five percent grant rate. And how many people came across from Belarus? Because of that percentage, three hundred and forty-two. Mm-hmm. So that's like a tiny number compared to how many people have crossed. Right? No, there's 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 plenty of others. Uh, if you, I mean, I don't have a total numbers. I would have to look at the total numbers. It'd be yeah. When be, I when I looked up total numbers, upon averages. I was looking at things that that uh, were reporting it as low as like ten to fifteen percent of of all cases were legitimate. So that's like. That's like upwards of yeah. I would love to see where you got that numbers percent. from. Yeah, I mean, I could I could look for the article and like send it to you. I'm, obviously, I'm not going to take up your time to do it now. But based on my research, that's the the point. And even if those numbers are off by like ten percent, that's still well over half that aren't uh, legitimate. So that's just uh, that's just making it harder for people who really do have legitimate asylum claims for their their cases to be heard and you know to give them a fair shot. Would you agree? Um, I actually do see here that in 2021, we do have, um, what is that around it's, it's around 50%, um, denial rate. So actually I do see this. That's Um, pretty high. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually, I do agree. That's pretty high, but again, would you say that we should assume people who are asylum seekers are illegal? No, not necessarily, but we, we clearly need a lot better process um uh, of getting those people through because re- like right now so they come and they claim asylum right and mm-hmm. then they're given a court date for like years in the future and then so so what's this case look like so 50 percent of the people who have a case in three years are going to get sent back i mean that's just cruel so you're going to let somebody stay here for three years they're going to you know find a place to live they're probably going to get a job they're going to start contributing to the community and then you're going to send them back because they didn't have a list a legitimate asylum claim and that's cruel that's more cruel than just sending them back as soon as they cross if you ask me i don't think that's more cruel that makes no sense to say that's more cruel but um so you so you would say that you how about with us let's make the system faster right you know it takes you know five to seven years right we'd have less claims for this this if we had the process take only six months and so and so what is the reason right now that it's so backed up why, why are we in this situation? Because we don't have enough uh, systems in place to be able to get people through faster. It's, it's clogged up in the courts. But it wasn't need this bad. More funding for it, that. Wasn't, it wasn't this bad under the last administration, though. Uh, because of the amount of people. So you could say it wasn't this bad under Obama's administration. And the policy difference between Obama and Biden is very, 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 very small in terms of immigration. So what this uh, actually I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree, actually. I think okay, that so what's the relevant difference? I mean, I mean, Obama used to deport people like crazy. What do you, what do you mean? And so is Biden. 3.5 times as many people have been uh, deported under Obama. I mean, uh, Biden there's compared a lot, to Trump. There's a, there's a lot more people, so that statistic is skewed in the favor of one, of one. Okay, so then how do you indicate that Obama would have had different immigration policy? Like, what was the difference in immigration policy? Yeah, I'm not too sure on specifics, but I just, I just, I just know that compared to this administration in the past, I know that this administration is basically incentivizing it, um, and that's why you see so such large numbers of people coming across because it's incentivized. As in the last, in, in under the last administration, it wasn't, and some of the policies that he used to disincentivize it were pretty cruel, right? I think we can both agree on that, but it's being incentivized right now. And that's why you're seeing such high numbers. So until we are able to, um, you know, get the proper resources that we have there to process these things on a quicker basis, then we need to stop incentivizing it. So you, you want to stop incentivize people, stop incentivizing people to go through the country. Um, uh, if you want to stop incentivizing people to go to the country that way, make sure to do so through the like by making the process legal. Right, but it's 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 not right now though, right? We need a lot more resources. We need a lot more people who can hear these cases, who can decide on this sort of thing, and we don't have those resources right now. So until we have those resources, we need to stop incentivizing it. Until we, ha- we, wait, we have the- we have resources though, where we we don't have an issue with the resources. 
So then why are we backed up so far? Uh, we haven't, no, we have an issue with like, uh, I thought you meant resources of the overall economy. We have an issue no. with the resources allocated to this. Right. Yes. So That's you're saying, saying until, until that, well then why would we dictate policy to act that way rather than dictate policy to act in the way that I'm referencing? That wouldn't make any sense. So it seems like you agree with me. Not, I'm not like sure. I, I'm not, what you last just said, I'm not exactly sure what you were referring to. You have to explain that to me differently. So we what should, were you asking? Uh, so we should change how our immigration process works. It should take again six months rather than five to seven years, rather than uh, changing how it would work in other ways, like by um, by like say making it harder for people to get into the country through the the asylum process. I don't think you necessarily need to make it harder. I think that we clearly just don't we we clearly just don't have enough people to handle this many cases right now, which is why we're backed up. Wait, so, so we need more funding if, for that. Absolutely. So that I mean, I think then all you're really saying is that we need to make the system go faster. I agree with you, and you're also agreeing with Biden. Right, but he's not. I mean, he he's he did a lot of things to counteract that, and then he got himself into a terrible situation, and now he's saving face and turning around and trying to push through legislation. But he repealed like tons of executive orders that Trump had in place to limit the amount of um, illegal crossings. Uh, so again, if it, again, I'm asking for the relevant difference between Biden and Obama. If you can't mention one to me, well, then I'm going to ask you, why is there such a difference in the amount of people coming over if it's just dependent upon policy then? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't like voting age when Obama ran. I couldn't vote in that election. And I'm honestly not too hip on his policies. All I can tell you is the difference between this administration and the previous and I know that this administration is incentivizing illegal immigration far more than the previous, and that's why the numbers are so high right now, and we do not have the resources at the border to... Uh, Wait, so why do you think we don't have the resources at that one time? We don't have the resources because we're backed up five to seven years, so it's clear. We, I mean, no, 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 we're backed up five to seven years because we don't give them enough resources. I don't know why you're just restating that point. You asked me the difference between Biden and Obama, and I'm telling you, I don't know. I'm all I'm telling so you. So if what you I don't know, know, then why do you? So then my point would then be is that it's likely environmental, okay? Because there is very similar uh, immigration policy between Obama and and Biden. Biden. Okay, but you brought that up. That's not my, that's not my point here. What's your point? <laughs> my point is that the border is broken right now. And illegal immigration is being incentivized by the current administration. You're saying it's and because I, of policy. What about it? Because again, the policy is the same under Obama's, yet there was way less people. And how do you well, think well, we're incentivizing? How are we incentivizing? Uh, well, you could point to things like the free health care for 700,000 illegal immigrants in California right now. We're giving them housings. We're giving them uh, stipends. A lot of these sanctuary cities are providing tons of resources for these people. I mean, that's, that's incentivizing it. Um, so wait, sorry, say, say how you think it's incentivizing again, one more time. Providing housing, providing stipends, providing f the bill in California, providing free health care to 700,000 illegal immigrants. When they see po policies like this, you. of course, Were these they're policies to... before. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. So these were policies before. So I'm asking something specific about Biden because you're saying like, oh, it's, it's, this is why it's happening now. And it wasn't happening then. So you have to give me something that didn't happen then, but happens. Well, now. the free healthcare is definitely not a previous policy. I mean, that, that's a bill right now in California. Yeah. So that hasn't been passed yet. Right. There, there's, there's free healthcare for certain people. There's like Medi-Cal but they don't have overall free healthcare. So then you're saying that we don't already incentivize it now. I'm saying, I don't know if they did previous previously, if they, if all these same policies were in place, then I guess you have a point here, but I don't think they were. I think, I think now it is a lot more accepted and it's a lot the policy more was the same under Obama and Biden. Yeah. Uh, right. But I'm not talking about Obama. I'm talking about Trump's presidency. I can't hear you. 
sorry, I Mike was muted. Um, so I, I I don't understand what your point is there because I'm not. I know you're not saying that. What I was comparing specifically was the context of uh, of of those two to say there was less people coming under Obama's administration, yet they had the same policy. So it's showing that it's not policy. And where's your? Didn't you just say that there was like no number? So how do you know that there was less coming in under under Obama? Than I'm talking Biden? encounters. And what's the difference? Encounters to other things. Okay, so let's let's like let's go through and like define these things then. So we're, I guess we're on the same page. So you're talking about encounters versus crossings. I'm just talking about encounters. And an encounter would be an illegal crossing, right? No. Okay, so what would the difference be? It would just be an encounter at the border with somebody who just crossed the border illegally, right? No. Okay, so then tell me, wh when would you encounter at the border that was not a situation when someone crossed illegally? Uh, people who travel across for work, uh, people who are traveling for vacation, right? Um, plenty of things. Somebody who travels for vacation goes through a port of entry. Mm hmm. So that wouldn't be an encounter. Encounters would be uh, a port so of entry. Yeah, so it's so you're both like, ways. You're encompassing all of it. So what if we just what if we just narrow it down to uh, encounters at the border? That's I'm referencing encounters at the border. But you just said people that went on vacation, so that that would include airports. Uh, we're talking at the border. Are you okay? You know, some so people for vacation drive across the border, right? I understand that, but you didn't clarify that when you said you just said people that go for vacation. So are you encompassing all of encounters? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was blatantly obvious that if we were talking about people going across the border, that it was people going across the border and not flying. Well, I wasn't necessarily aware because you were talking about encounters that happen just in general. So an encounter could take place at multiple different places. So I guess so I was we just were talking there. encounters at the border. Well, you just kept saying encounters and I was asking you to like. We were talking about borders. Yeah, we're talking about the Southern War. So, I mean, unless unless you lost like half of your brain in the middle of that conversation, I think you would have gotten that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe I did. Nicholas, thank you for the six dollars sixty six cents. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I'm just like, bro. I'm like, we literally were like, that, those are like basic things that were already known in the conversation. Yeah, I just okay. No my, hate though. My, like, I'm just like. My basic point is just, I just feel like the system's broken right now. And I mean, even, even like if, if you narrow it down even further, like a lot of the people that are claiming asylum at the border should be the, the asylum process. Technically these people should be claiming asylum long before they get to our Southern border. Right. They should be claiming asylum in Mexico. They should oh, be no, claiming you asylum. Do you don't have to do that. No, the asylum process, you just come to the country and claim. Well, you can, but technically you are supposed to. No, there's no you supposed, are supposed to. to I don't know where you got that idea from. No, that's wrong. That's 100% wrong. Look at the asylum are, code. If you, if you, if I'm you, not wrong. Yeah, look at the asylum no, you code. Can pull, you can pull it up. You can literally look at the. And what, what were you looking at? Pull it up for me. And Let's it, read it, it doesn't. Do you want me to read it right now? I don't see the point. I'm literally telling you it. But I can pull it up if you really <laughs> I disagree. Need. You have you read the asylum code? Yeah. Well, what asylum code are you, you referring read, to? You read I, the asylum I'm, code. I'm, I'm referring to the. Uh, Convention relating to the status of refugees, the UN uh, conference. No, this is from US. It's US asylum code, bro. Okay, but yeah, but we need to encompass more than just the United States asylum because, of course, I'm going to read it. To the I'll read it for you right now. It's just really yeah, long. But, it's like, yeah, but I don't think we need to read the US one specifically because what I'm referring to would be like the process of somebody who's fleeing the fear of persecution they should technically be claiming asylum in the first country that they enter no, that no. grants asylum. No. Based, no. On, based on, maybe not based we're, on We're not US talking about international standards. We're talking about standards in the U.S. Like what? Well, I'm talking, I'm talking about international standards. That's not relevant to the standards in the U.S. If you're fleeing a country that you fear persecution in, right? That's, that's, we're, we're now dealing with international because people are coming here from international places, right? So if somebody is leaving, but their they're country, coming to the U.S., so it's U.S. code.
But my point is that they should not be because if you're claiming asylum, if you're seeking asylum, you should seek in the first place. Whether or not you, you think it should or shouldn't is irrelevant. We're talking about it's what is should. the law. Okay. You're talking about U.S. law, but I'm talking about. Listen, there. any so any immigrant who is physically present in the United States or who arrives in the United States, whether or not designated port of arrival and including an immigrant who is brought to the United States after be being uh, interdicted uh, in international or United States waters, irrespective of such immigrant's status, may apply for asylum in accordance with this section or where applicable. So you don't think that like the UN convention should like relate to this at all? I, it doesn't. I mean, if you're just gonna it's literally US code. I understand. I understand, but I'm I'm encompassing broader context here because we're talking about people. We're not talking about just people. I mean, you clearly know this. Like the, the people that are coming across the border are not like Mexican. Most of them are like from overseas, right? Yeah. So where? So uh, no, actually, predominantly now. Now it's going to be people from across the world, and it's going to be people from right. other uh, Latin American countries and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So so how are they getting to Mexico to cross? They're flying in. Right? Yo, Ryan, thank you for the six dollars six six cents. Thank you so much, Ven on Venma. Thank you so much. I I don't know. I I, I would have to check the, the data on that. I'm not familiar. No, I'm. What do you mean? I said I said if people are coming, you just said that nowadays. No, I don't know how are people are. Coming. Appreciate the look around. Thank you so much. I know I know where people are coming from. Yeah. I don't know how people are coming. Like it would be by boat or plane. I, I okay, assume. sure, boat or plane, either one. They have they're 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 stepping foot in a different country that grants asylum before they are coming to ours. Technically, they can by international standards. They might not. They are supposed to. Dude, I don't I don't care what you think about international standards. It does not specify that in United States asylum code. I understand that. I mean, you can completely throw out like the international standard that the yeah, UN that's exactly what if that's exactly what we would do to make yeah, your not relevant. But you're just doing that to make your argument better. When I have a good point here, I don't. You're just I don't see how it's relevant it. to this specifically because the only thing that would be relevant to whether or not people are allowed in the country would be whether or not the U.S. asylum code allowed them. Like it's it's not going to be relevant. Like what the UN thinks about asylum, right? That's just, I don't I don't see why that would. I mean, like every everything here kind of like encompasses one another, right? Because our asylum rules are going to be adopted based on similar things that like the, that we agree to in the UN, right? So if we're if we're expecting people to come and then claim asylum in Mexico before they get here, then we might not be expecting as many crossings as we te technically are now because. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you you might say we'd have less of people seeking asylum in the U.S. I don't, I don't know what your point is with that, though. The point is that, like, like, dude, I, I like, okay, so the reason why I don't think it's either even asylum code as well is because I think it's pretty clear that, like, we had literally the same shit under Obama's administration, and we had way less people, okay? So so then what is your, re what's your reasoning behind why there's so many? It's environmental, political instability, political turmoil, whether it be COVID, inflation, war, like plenty of things. So do you expect, like the number you gave me was 50%, obviously that was up in the air when we last talked about, do you expect that number to go like way up for people who get accepted? Uh, yeah, I mean, it has been trending that way. Yeah, I, I don't know for sure if it has. If if that is, I the just case, looked at I it. It was it was trending that way. Okay, what was the previous and compared to what it was now? You said fifty percent. Yeah, so I think that's where you got the 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 sixty or seventy percent number from. It was about sixty percent, and then sixty or seventy percent. And, when, and what year was that compared to the fifty percent? I think it was like Trump's current? administration. Here, I'll pull it up. Um, give me one second. Um, asylum, uh, approval rating. Oh fuck! I have to click the second one from Syracuse. So I mean, it was it was around fifty percent before Trump's administration, and then Trump came into office, increased it to about actually ninety percent almost. Michael, thank you for the ten dollars and thirty four cents. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you. Trump increased it to like ninety percent yeah. of people didn't oh, have yeah. legitimate asylum. Yeah, denied. 
Like wow. denied. Wow, that's wild. I know, right? I mean, I wouldn't uh, see, and that, that's the thing too. That goes too far for me. Like, I wouldn't. I wait, wouldn't here, agree I'm with like ninety percent. Wait, am I am I reading this wrong? I think I am reading this wrong. Here, I think it might be. It might be that asylum other granted was fifty percent. Wait, I don't know. This is okay. It's confusing. I, I think I'm reading it correctly. Where are you reading it from? Uh, it's from Syracuse. I actually could be reading this incorrectly because the the bar graph is kind of confusing. So you see how it has like a green thing on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's saying asylum granted is up to that point, and then the the denied is going to be past that point. I think it could be saying that. I would so like the, to, the asylum yeah, denied would just be that blue bar. Can you uh, give me the? the so do you see this? So you see how it, it was? Yeah, I just want to. So look, actually, the the accept or acceptance that. rates seem to be near fifty percent anyway. So yeah, it's about fifty percent. And has it been stagnant, or is that like? Yeah, it's pretty stagnant, and it just went up a bit so, under Trump. And would you expect it to stay stagnant over the next like five yeah. to seven years as we process? Yeah, for for like uh for like what we saw in the early two thousands and. 2010s and stuff so if we're still remaining at like 50 percent, then i think what your previous point was wasn't necessarily um true then right what point that it was like political turmoil and like the reasoning for why there's so much more now because then we would be granting people at a higher rate if oh no it's not more about granting system. rate because granting rate takes into account the amount of people coming i'm talking about the number of people number of people coming yeah. So the art, the thing you just sent me was how many people were coming or how many? No, that's the, the, the rate of people approved. Right. So the, my question to you was like, since you, you said um, that the reasoning why there's so many more now under this administration compared to previous was because- Is, of, is likely because of these things. Right. And if that, and my, my question is now, if that is the case, then they would have legitimate asylum claims, right? So would you expect those numbers to go up? In the uh, I would expect them to be years? the same level, but it is the case that there would just be more of them. But if somebody has a legitimate asylum claim, they technically should be granted asylum, right? Yeah, yeah, they would be granted asylum. But again, right. it is the case. I would expect there to be more overall, right? But I could still expect it to be the same level. I, I don't see why the approval rating would have to go up or down. Like, because because if 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 the reason for them coming over so much more now is because of political turmoil where they're coming from, then that's a legitimate reason to claim asylum in the country. So therefore, I would expect the rate of people being granted asylum to go up because the reason they're coming is because of a, a legitimate reason for asylum. That's my point. Does that make yeah, sense? but but there were legitimate reasons why people were coming before. So I mean I don't see any reason to say that we would expect for it. Well, there's to go always up. been legit. There's always been legitimate reasons, right? And then there's a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, that's who what are I'm just... saying. That like there's always legitimate reasons, right? I just think that there would be more people, right? But there would be the same level. The way I understand it is, I understand what lot... you're saying, though. Like I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I sure get like it could be the case that like it could go up in terms of the approval ratings, right? right. But I mean, I don't think that's necessarily entailed. Right. That's what I would expect if the reasonings you gave for why people were coming uh, were mm -hmm. true. The way I understand it is uh, the majority of the people who are claiming asylum are, are claiming for like economic-based reasons. They want better economic opportunity, which is great. We should allow people to come here. Yeah, to, even if they get denied, to, it could be that case. So like, I mean. Right, so, so and, and that's a legitimate reason to come here, right? But people should have to do that the legal way. Like I'm married to uh, a girl who's from Albania and her family had to wait, I mean, a very long time to get here. And they just got uh, naturalized, right? And they had to have like master's degrees. I mean, you have to like, you put your name in a pool. It's, it's, it's a long time. Yo, process, Ryan, thank process. you for the $6.66. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's a really uh, hard and uh, selective process that people that go through it the, the legal way have to go through. And I don't think it's fair that a lot of people are skipping that and those other people are being thrown to the wayside. Would you agree? Here, sorry, say that last thing. I was reading something. I apologize. I was just saying it's a little bit of a, uh, an antidote because um, the woman I'm married to came from Albania. Um, so they they migrated here legally. And I just – so because of that, I, I know the process that it takes to come here the legal way and how selective and how hard it is to come. Um, and I think that it's a little bit 
unfair to those people who are coming the legitimate way who have to have really good degrees and have to you know wait a really long time and and go yeah this wait, that doesn't mean we should always keep it that way wait just like for right, example no, yeah, right like think about it this way right uh, it, p- before we had k through 12 education right you could have said oh what about for all the people that paid for their k through 12 education before isn't this unfair to the people who have already paid for it and gotten gotten ahead to the other people right because they paid for it um so we shouldn't give people everyone access to k through 12 education because that would be unfair to the people that already paid for it. Like, do you see how that's, that's not a good a, argument? Yeah, I think that's a little bit different than what I'm saying, though, because they're not like they're not making steps to to do that. Right. They're just letting people come in here, say that they're claiming asylum, even though half of them are not legitimate. They're staying here for five to seven. That's years. That's how we were already doing it, process. though. But the, the timetable was much shorter because they weren't backlogged so much. So they no, were we, able we've to been backlogged for a while, more, but not nearly as long as we are now. Um, can you give me a source on that? I mean, you, yeah, I would just look it up. It, it, it will, it will pop up pretty easily. Okay. You want me to look it up? I was saying you should just look it up. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I, mean, well, if I, I, look I looked it up, it up and you're wrong. Give you like a, okay, go ahead. I looked it up and you're wrong. Okay, go ahead. Oh no, I, I don't you just look it up. You're wrong. Oh you Do you, you see the point read, I'm making like, there? Yeah, I guess I guess you're saying that's what I said to you, but that wasn't necessarily the case. my case is that like if I look it up, I'm gonna have to like send you a link or something to the article. You could just tell me a title. Okay. If you wanna give me a say, I just I feel like I'm wasting your time to sit here and like look up. Well I you can I can get another person, you can come later. I mean, I don't think we'll probably have a great discussion if if we pause for like an hour in the middle of it. Didn't you say you're ending your life soon anyways? Um, I've got another hour, hour and 30. All right. So do you want to look it up? You want to let me look it up? You can look it up, look it up and come back. Yeah. I See mean, ya. you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the next person. Everyone only send a guest request if you will vote for Trump in 2024. You know, it's a Powell to you? 46. For sure. Will you vote for Trump in 2024? Most definitely. Why is that? Well, I won't talk about the border crisis because I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Trump will uh, protect our gun rights. Really? He uh, engaged in a bump stock ban, which was one of the biggest gun control uh, legislation, uh, biggest acts of gun control legislation in the modern era. Yeah, and you'll find a lot of folks don't really, they will support a a bump stop ban too because there's no practical reason for it. So you're against it? I was never never for or against a bump stop ban. Okay, but that's a gun control and you were arguing against gun control. So like what gun control has Biden engaged in specifically that you are are against? Semi-automatic rifles. He wants to ban all semi-automatic? Is that what you're saying? Definitely. Uh, where, uh, where has he said that he wants to ban every semi semi automatic rifle? Well, let's just let's just say he wants to ban one type of semi automatic rifle. Okay, what's the issue with that? It's a big issue. There's what's no- what semi automatic rifle, and is the reason to believe that it's harmful? Do what? What semi automatic rifle? Uh, AR fifteen. So when did he, when did he call for that? But he talks about it all the time if you turn on the TV. I never heard him talk about that, but let's say he does believe this. I haven't, I haven't seen him talk about it. Um, uh, what's wrong with that? Why do you need an AR-15? Uh, to defend myself? To go hunting? Be fucking for real. You need an AR-15 to defend yourself? Definitely. No, you don't. I don't. What who are you, who are you de- defending yourself who are, from? Who are you? Who are you to say I don't need who it? Who are you? Do you have five stars on GTA? What What do you need it for, dude? To defend myself. You, you, this is not GTA, bro. Why would you need a, an AR-15 to defend yourself? It, it's not GTA. That's why I need an AR-15 because I'm not going to be able to take out thirty people with a pistol. Why so, are thirty <laughs> people coming to hurt you? They're not. Okay, so then, so then, why do you need an AR-15? When thirty people do come to hurt me, when is that going to happen? Why are we talking about hypotheticals? 
you're the one who's talked about hypotheticals by saying 30 people are going to come hurt you. That's a hypothetical. Uh, no, no, I'm telling you, I need an AR-15 to defend myself and you have a problem. Yeah, you, need with an AR, you need an AR to defend yourself in a hypothetical scenario. Yes. Yeah. There so you, you brought up the hypotheticals, dude. Yeah. So you, why you said, you, you said, what is up with the hypotheticals? You brought it up. So when, when you ride a bike, when you're five years old, do you think you need a helmet to defend yourself? Yeah. Why do you think you need a helmet? Because you could fall and hurt yourself. You're talking about hypotheticals. I agree. I never disputed the use of hypotheticals. So. Wow, this guy's so fucking for, just so intelligent. <laughs> I never disputed the use of hypotheticals. Okay, you, you were the one disputing the usage while using it. I was just you pointing out the this? hypocrisy. You, now you're gaslighting. I never gaslit. When did I gaslight? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I just proved your point there. How did I? You, you proved you, my you, point. Yeah, you did. So how did I gaslight? So because a, because a hypothetical doesn't exist you believe this item should be banned no that's not what i said so let's i was, I was showing i was let's showing can you stop talking for a second let's ban helmets can you stop talking you for a second a bike yet. can you stop talking i never said that i deny the usage of hypotheticals i just clarified this right i was just showing the hypocrisy in the statement that you were denying the usage of hypotheticals while using a hypothetical why are okay. we going down a rabbit hole now this is not a rabbit hole. You keep saying I'm engaging in rabbit holes and gaslighting. Can you define okay. any of these terms and tell me how I'm using them? Why can I not have an AR-15 to defend myself? You're not answering any of my questions. Now you're deflecting. I'm not. You actually were the one that's deflecting. Nice projection. Why can I not have an AR-15 to defend myself? Uh, I don't think you need one. Um, Who are you to say I don't need one? Um, Parker's, uh, Par Parker, right? Not me about to like dox myself, bro. Yeah, my name is Parker. I'm I'm saying it. Yeah. Who are you to say I don't need one? Parker. That's 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 who, that's 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 who. Deflecting again. I'm not deflecting from shit, dude. So Appreciate you, confetti, thank you. So you believe that you or a majority gets to dictate how and what I can defend yeah. myself. Should I have an access to a nuclear weapon? <laughs> Should you have access to a nuclear yeah, weapon? Yeah, if I want to buy a nuclear, nuclear weapon, weapon, should I be able to? No. Why, why, did you want to, why do you want to tell me, as a human, what I can and can't have access to? Who are you to say what I need and what I don't need? What's bad about an AR-15? What's bad about a nuclear weapon? Uh, it can kill millions. Oh, yeah. And AR-15s can be used to kill children in schools, right? Can be used uh, to kill people, right, at, at higher levels. At higher and capacities we have over fifty thousand people that die from cars what's your point no i'm saying it has the capacity to do it at higher capacities so right? you, there's fifty thousand people that die from cars right there, yep. are, there are millions of people that die from heart disease across the entire world and starvation does that mean that we we shouldn't acknowledge the millions that could die from nuclear uh nuclear bombs yeah the nuclear bombs is a huge difference millions what, what about tanks thousands. what about tanks should someone be able to have access to a tank Definitely. You, you think you think a loaded tank? Definitely. Uh, you, okay. What about a rocket launcher? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. I sh so see, I should have see how, see rocket how launchers down, and tanks. See how see how what we're else? going let, down See how we're going no, down let, me, let me let me go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going, bro. I'm just I just want to make sure. What about a minigun? Definitely. De do you, definitely. Do you enjoy this rabbit a hole? Full, a fully we've automatic minigun. We've completely no, deflected. I'm not, I'm not, from I'm not deflecting from anything. Can you please let me finish my point? I, what I'm demonstrating is I'm showing your your reasoning and your logic, right? You're showing you're, your rabbit hole debate. No, I'm showing your reasoning and your logic. You, you right? can't debate. Uh, you can't debate one single topic because you lead everyone down a rabbit hole. No, I'm. You, you will you your not, reasoning you will applied not in other discuss, scenarios. You will not discuss why it's so bad for people to own an AR-15. You want to start talking about nukes and tanks and rocket launchers. Okay. So the reason I specifically brought these things up is because I'm showing how far you take it. And then what I'm using is I'm, sh I'm showing you where you ever draw that line. I can show you how ambiguous it actually is and show you that you could just apply it to this scenario. That's actually what the goal of what I was doing. But what you don't uh, understand is what I was doing. A lot of people will draw the that line off. At, a lot of people draw the line at guns because there's usually not a lot of people that want to own and purchase tanks and jets. But there's millions, tens of millions of gun owners that there's would not a lot of people that want to get nuclear weapons. 
Exactly. That's my point. So, so, so it's but, easy, but it still should be illegal. It's easier to draw those lines in those areas, but we're talking about an AR-15. Yeah. And what's, what's wrong with getting rid of access to an AR-15? I honestly, like I clearly, I don't see like a really big issue with this. I'm not like saying I'm in support of getting rid of an AR-15, but what I am saying is that I don't really see that as a big of an issue, right? If this is the reason why you're going to vote for a proven sexual abuser, a proven fraudster, an election denier who's a threat to our democracy, someone who sent 83% of taxes to the top 1% called for religious persecution, called for the reduction in freedom in terms of saying that it should be illegal to burn the American flag, well, then I'm just going to think that's not a good enough reason. It's not a good enough reason? Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, I'm, you, I'm talking about you saying one, you want your AR-15 is simply not a good enough reason. I, I'm talking about one of many reasons, but I can only spend time talking to you about one because you will take me down a rabbit hole on every issue. So I mean, I, we're gonna I, we're I gonna pick, talk I we're gonna talk the, critically about every issue. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I try picked, to be thorough with the beliefs I have. I picked. If you don't want to be thorough, go to someone else's live. I'm or being you can talk in more simplistic terms. I'm being terms. thorough with a very basic issue. And you're leading me down a rabbit hole with tanks and nukes. I'm not, dude. I literally, I literally told you what it was meant, but you're too much of a dumbass to realize what it was. I just now told I'm you. Pissing, now I'm pissing yes, off because yes. you're losing. No, you're I'm not losing. losing anything. I just explained it to you, and you still you decided to purposefully AR, misunderstand it. You want to get that rid is of what AR a dumbass 15s. is? Someone who purposefully misunderstands reality. Show me where an basic AR. Basic reasoning. Show me where an AR-15 has killed a large number of, of children. Because last I checked, the most children that have died. Um, literally, have look at every school, almost every school shooting in the past fucking 20 years. Yeah. Like, the most a majority of school shootings, they use have, an AR-15. Why do they use an AR-15? The majority of them have died by pistol. Tell me, why do they use an AR-15? No, the majority not, not mass of shootings. them have died by not pistol. Not mass shootings. Not mass yes, shootings. Yes, they have. Want to bet? Look it up. Yes, let's bet. They have died by pistol. Want to bet? Yes. They had, there were AR-15s in a lot of school shootings, but they had pistols. And once they went through the first 30 rounds, they just grabbed their pistol and, and went to town after that. They used that AR-15 to start blowing shit up, getting everyone running. After they emptied that mag, they went straight to their pistol. They were accused of being basically racist. I actually, I actually do take this back. Uh, I do think most are handguns. I do, I do think I take that back. Um, but Sandy, Sandy Hook was definitely an AR-15. Um, yeah, I, I actually, I think I take that back because uh, I am seeing stuff here indicating that it is likely more. Um, like it has been used in multiple different ones. It's just not as likely, it seems. Well, uh, let me pull this up. Um, and keep in mind, there's a lot of pistols. Yeah, so so, so it is a majority rounds. of them. It seems are handguns. So this is for all mass shootings, but uh, a significant portion are rifles. Um, yeah, I, I think I think uh, yeah, it seems to be that you're right about the handguns. So I definitely will concede on that. Yeah, that seems to be true. So what was your other point? That's that's my only point. Is I, that's my one issue why I would vote for him because we have. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't wait want again. DC that wants to start taking away our guns. Let's, let's, let's say there's no reason to take away an AR-15. I still don't think it's a good enough reason, right? I still don't think it's a good enough reason to vote for the uh, for tr for Trump, who's literally denying the democratic elections, who uh, is trying to reduce women's access to abortion, who's trying to. Uh, or who's a proven sexual abuser, a proven fraudster, who's trying to engage in more tax cuts, which would be heavily targeted towards the rich and the wealthy, right? Plenty of things. Yeah, there, there's a lot of them. The, the border debate, I won't get too crazy in that, but we are incentivizing it now. We started incentivizing it as soon as Biden went into office. And even California just recently, they're giving illegals 20 grand down payment to go get into a home and they get to keep it if they stay in the home for at least four or five years. Where is this? Where is this? You said California, California. Yeah. I'm asking about like federal because you're talking about Trump and Biden, right? If you want to talk about states, we can talk about that at a different time. That's irrelevant. Well, no, it's real. It's all part of it. I don't no, care it's if it's not. a state. I don't care if it's a state or the federal government. The fact it of the matter is quite literally irrelevant. Sometimes. 
it is quite literally irrelevant. Okay. Well, you can go to Biden and Harris for the first year in office. They, him and Harris went on TV, come to America. They were just flat out encouraging it. You can go look those clips up. So I don't know what more proof you need on incentivized. It's flat out been incentivized. Sorry, say so you said what's been incentivized again? Like people coming oh. to the country undocumented? Correct. Yeah, so you could say from uh, it's in, so for example, being uh, being uh, actually, you could say anything is incentivized by the standpoint being people being tourists in this country is incentivized. Well, yeah, of course. Okay, what's your point? Well, the fact that it's incentivized is a problem when we don't have the resources to process. Hey, there, there's there, it's being incentivized by us having a good system. Right, so we should have a shitty system, one that doesn't work for anyone, because that would then disincentivize undocumented immigration. It's actually been incentivized. You're you're, wow. you're incentivizing undocumented immigration by making the systems here better off. Do what? Yeah, if the country is better off, that means more people will want to come here, right? Correct. Naturally. Yeah. So again, that means you're incentivizing that if you want to make our system better. You are doing that. Yeah, again, I agree, but I don't think that's a problem. Well, it's a problem when you're incentivizing it. There's wow. no problem in incentivizing it because you want a better system. Well, there, there's multiple forms of incentivizing it. Of course, if our country is doing well, that in itself will incentivize people coming over. But when you get on TV and flat out encourage people to come over, that's a whole nother realm. What do you mean by encourage? Like flat out, get on TV and say, come to America. Who said that? Harris. She said for who to come to America? Everyone in South America come to America. She did not say everyone. She said people that people, what did she say specifically? I'd have to go look up that clip. Okay. So regardless I mean, of what come she on, said, bro. Come on, bro. I think it's really important. She, said, but, she flat uh, out. Talk about talk about Trump supporters are always like, they always take out the, the liberal fake news media takes out the, takes out the, takes out the, uh, takes out the context. I don't care who yeah, she is. Thank you for the $2. The fact, I appreciate it. The thank fact you. of the matter is she was talking to non U S citizens, tell, encouraging them to come here. And when we don't have a system, she, in place apparently she said, do not come. Problem, Apparently she did. She said, do not come. She later did say, do not come when she got slammed for it. <laughs> she did go back and say that. Um, I, I see one about her saying, do not come. I do not see one saying her to come. Well, welcome to the left wing media. <laughs> so it, you're, you're not, it's going to be a lot tougher for you to find. Thanks to your mainstream news. Yeah, go, go, go find me one source that says that. All right, I'll sit here and I'll, and I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait for one, one fucking thing. Oh, by the way, I was going to ask everyone, is Tashika getting banned at all? Because she was apparently doing... She's not getting banned. Should we try to join her in a bit? After, after this guy, I think I might want to join her. Until I, until I get off for tonight. Because she hasn't gotten banned yet. So, like, that sounds fun, you know? Here, I'm going to add up Prank TV in the meantime. Who's going to bring up this bring up this one source? We can I'd, do a two-on-one. I'd have to dig deeper for it, too. You can thank the uh, the left-wing media that's good at suppressing stuff oh, along oh, with your face. You got no sources, dude. Trust me, bros. That's all you got. Oh, the source? The sources are out there. No the, sources. You, none, of, none at all. S S Sleepy PM can't can't get can't give us a single source. Hey, you you can thank your fellow sheep that just suppress news. That's Sleepy what they Trump do. Sleepy Trump supporters. Sleepy Trump supporters. <laughs> you can be pissed off all you want to. I've already gave my points. I'm not pissed you, off. I just showed. I we, showed you how you have, you've got nothing. You've got nothing, brother. I've got nothing. You've got absolutely uh, nothing, brother. We've only talked about Air 15 and border. I mean, there's there's plenty. Uh, we'll keep keep going, bud. So Trump tax. Did you mean cuts. to bring me in here? Yeah, Trump go tax for it. Cuts. You can go for it too. I would rather have like a a real one on one debate than than two on one. Yeah, I'm giving you I'm giving you a teammate, bro. I don't even know if I agree with this dude politically whatsoever. <laughs> you guys are Trump supporters. 
uh, well, I said I, if it was between the two options, I would choose the shiniest of two turds, in my opinion. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a Trump supporter. Oh, so you think he's bad for being a proven sexual abuser? He's not a Trump? proven sexual abuser. Are you asking me or him? Yeah, Frank, uh, if you do you wanna, think he's a proven sexual you, abuser? Was he criminally I mean, charged? He was, he was, he was, he was found uh, liable by a jury, so I would have to say yes. <laughs> He yeah, was so, so, a, so yeah, he was held liable by a jury, right? In a so Marky, pool. Marky, so you you think that even Can though you he just was pull held, me back when you're done with him? Do you understand the difference between a civil? <laughs> you know court how bad his position court? is. Do you know? <laughs> do you know the difference I'm between a civil? Whatsoever. I, I do you know the just, difference between a civil court and a criminal court? <laughs> Dude, it's kind of interesting because I, I like to hear I like to hear it. But oh, did she, she get to get banned literally the moment I said that? That's crazy, bro. No, but seriously, though. Yeah, I will, I will add you up after. I will add you up okay, after. Sweet. So if I, I look at Trump's it, name, I'll see that he has a criminal charge for being a sex offender? Uh, no, it's not a criminal charge. It's a civil court. Oh, so he wasn't criminally found guilty. Okay. No, I never said criminally. We said civil court. Okay. Yeah, big difference. And not really. It's just, a, it's just that one's passed the statute of limitations. No. No, it's yeah. just not statutes of limitations. It, even if it was within statutes, if they don't find enough criminal evidence, then your last resort is to seek punitive. No, damage it's because it was past the statute of limitations, so they went to uh, civil courts because uh, uh, because of that because they were able to get past statute of limitations. So yeah, I did jinx to shake everyone. Is I this, feel so bad. Is this so the terrible. Is this the trial regarding the dress that was not even that didn't even exist during the time the incident happened? It wasn't even designed. Can you give me a reason to believe that? Uh, it, it's you'd have to go look at the trial. Uh, I asked for a reason to believe that that the dress wasn't even designed during that time frame. Yeah, yeah. Give me a reason to believe that. And why would someone hold on to a dress for thirty years with a cum stain on it? I mean, please, seriously. Can you please give me a reason to believe that? Give me a reason to believe uh, maybe someone, because they were abused. Give me a reason to believe why someone would hold on to a dress with a cum stain maybe on because it they were abused, years. dumbass. Or were they that traumatized that they yes. held on to a dress and did not wash it or throw? Yes, that they that I they were abused. abused. Yeah, yeah. If I was abused, they were abused. I, yeah, I think I would have. Victims, victims that literally out. do. Victims literally do that, you're, and you're too much of a dumbass to realize that. Sit down and fucking realize that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The jury literally said that he committed this shit, and you're sitting here being an apologist for an abuser who sexually abused this person. Okay, the, you literally—I I don't even know how you can sit there and act like that. This is this is not something that victims would do. Okay, this shows that she's like this is what you'd expect given the circumstance. What does that make you feel better? Yeah, they call you a dumbass. Yes, because you're a fucking apologist to abusers. Yeah, I, yes, absolutely. I feel better calling you a dumbass. Okay. This is what I would say if I if if I wasn't on my main account. I'm not. So fuck, dude. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you deserve to be told the truth. I sit here and I, I'm way too patient, way too nice with people. Sometimes you deserve to get called a dumbass because you're literally on here being an apologist for a sexual abuser. If that's okay. what you think, that's your opinion. No, it's not just what I think. That's uh, that's 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 what you're is literally the case calling in this scenario. someone a sexual abuser because he got fined in a civil court. Yeah, for he's a, a proven crime, sexual abuser. Yes, for a crime that happened over thirty years ago. That yeah, there that was doesn't hardly, mean he didn't abuse someone. Oh my that god, that there bro. there it, there was at, at minimum hardly any even circumstantial evidence. Dude, what do you mean circumstance? Okay, so if you say that there wasn't sufficient evidence, well, you're throwing out basically almost every grape charge. Okay, are you going to do that? Am I doing what? Are you going to throw out basically every rape charge in America? No, I wouldn't throw oh, out. Every I, got, rape I got a violation for harassment and bullying. I got a chill shot. Say that again. I would. I would not throw out every rape charge. But you, yeah, well, almost you, you every understand? almost every yeah. single conviction would be thrown out if you use the standard of evidence. No, it, no, that's not how the system works. It, is, you do right. you do realize you're innocent until proven guilty and they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt yes i understand that in this scenario it's preponderance of the evidence which says it's more likely than not and you're saying that you wanna you wanna vote for someone who more likely than not is a sexual abuser are we speaking of bill clinton or donald trump uh we're talking about donald trump okay yeah i'd vote for him i don't believe he's a sexual abuser yeah, even though a, a jury of his peers indicated that to be true. In a so, let, uh, do, you have, yeah. do you have children? Yes. 
Okay. If if uh, someone uh, uh, wanted to date your child when they were of age and consenting and everything like that, right? Would you say that there would be any issue if they, in the context of a civil court, were held liable by a, a jury of their peers for sexual abuse? It would all depend on the circumstances, what all was out in that civil trial. Civil so, trial so, so you wouldn't be concerned. Sense. So just given a typical circumstance, you would, would not be, be concerned. concerned. I would definitely so if be you would concerned. be concerned as it relates to the context of who would date your offspring, then why the hell wouldn't you be concerned with who the fuck is going to be president? I am concerned. And that's okay. why I, clearly not enough. Clearly not enough. Okay. Yes. And you're, you're saying that Biden is the better pick. Yes, clearly. Clearly. I don't okay. like Biden, but he's definitely a better pick than Trump. Because he's never been charged for all his wrongdoings. He hasn't been held liable for sexual abuse or def for defamation. He has not been denying the election for the past few years when there's no sufficient evidence to indicate that. He did not send 83% of taxes to the top 1% in his latest tax policy. He didn't specifically argue for religious persecution and banning Muslims from coming to the country, a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the United States of America. Right? He didn't put multiple Supreme Court justices in place that overturned Roe versus Wade and led to 13 year olds in America having to go through the context of pregnancies, right? Because their state put an abortion law in place that forced them against their will and against what they want to do with their body as it relates to uh, an abortion, right? Not their body, someone else's body. No, their body, right? We're talking about literal, literal uh, fetuses prior to the context of sentience, right? I don't yeah. care about cellular life. I care about human sentient life. Do you, so you think that that cellular life could end up being a tree? Is that why? No, the, it, it's obviously going to end up being a human. But same thing with me and my girlfriend having sex, right? If I don't pull out, right? Uh, or actually, well, if, if she doesn't use birth control, then it is going to be the case that we're going to have children, right? That is, well, it's wrong not, for her to use birth control. Not with, not with your position. If you fuck up, then you get to kill the baby. That's your position. Um, I don't think it's wrong for you to get an abortion prior to sentience. Of course yeah. you don't. Under, under your view, if there's a zygote, right? If I slap the zygote, it's, I go to jail for the rest of my life. So it's like, and see, it kind of goes with like if, if we have a Petri too. dish and I have a sperm and an egg and I cause fertilization and there's just a single cell organism in front of me, that's a zygote, right? If I slap that zygote or kill that zygote, you believe that's murder. So like you believe I should go to prison for the rest of my life. That's crazy. Like that's ridiculous. But your position is if since that fetus depends on you, it has no rights. No, not just because it depends, because it's not sentient, right? Okay. Because there are people there taking and, and because it depends be on you, you can you can remove that dependency. Because there's people that are also taking the position now that they should be able to kill their six month old child because that child is still dependent on them. Like no, I don't I don't it's not just for dependency, right? I'm not arguing out, out of the womb that you can just kill your kids, right? What I'm arguing is that if it's not sentient, you can get an abortion. Okay. And that will always forever be the controversial debate. There are folks that have no problem killing babies in the womb, and there are folks that do. There's no issue with getting an abortion in the first trimester. Absolutely not. In your opinion, yes. Absolutely. It's in my opinion. In and you'll in, find your, in your opinion, you think it's ethical to force women to go through the context of pregnancies for things that are not sentient. Nice job, bud. Why are you calling it force? They made the choice. Uh, having a choice to engage in sex does not mean that you're choosing to be pregnant. Appreciate the bunny ears. Thank you. What is sex for? It's for making babies. No, sex is for, for pleasure in for most cooking, circumstances. It's expression of love. Food. It's not for cooking food. It's, for That's expression, it's expression of love and, and pleasure in most circumstances. Well, the expression of love you can do with hugging and Do you think someone who's raped like should be able to get access to an abortion? Appreciate the hand heart. If someone is what? If someone is raped, should they get be able to get access to an abortion? Uh, we can we can run off on that debate too, but I don't. I think they should adopt. They should okay, so even that. even if they didn't choose this, you think they should be forced? So a child, you think a thirteen year old should be forced to go through the context of a pregnancy if they were if they were raped? You, you keep stating it as forced, but. The, the, the fact of the matter is, should is the 13 year old be forced to go through context of a pregnancy mm -hmm. after she was raped? You keep stating it as force, but the fact of the matter is the pregnancy already exists. So there's no force there. No, you're forcing her by not letting her have access to an abortion. I can't force her to stay pregnant. Yes, you can by saying it's illegal to get an abortion. Do you think it should be illegal for her to get access to an abortion when she's 13 years old and got raped? No. You, oh, so you think it should be legal? 
legal for what? For her to get an abortion? No. No, it shouldn't be legal. It should be illegal. No. Yeah. So, so she, so the thirteen-year-old should have to go through the context of a pregnancy, right? No, she has the right to kill her baby if she wants to, but she can deal with the consequences. You mean go to prison? Whatever the law is, whatever's written. And I hope it's written in the state that she's in that it's not wrong, right, and that it's okay, right? Because it is absolutely okay for a thirteen-year-old, right, to get an abortion in the first trimester. I see nothing wrong with that. You keep saying thirteen-year-old like we're talking about a toddler. I mean, kids don't have babies; young adults have babies. You're disgusting. You know there are nine-year-olds that have gotten pregnant. You know there are five-year-olds that have gotten pregnant. You don't whenever, consider them children. Whenever they reach, do you consider that? Do you consider them children, dumbass? Whenever they reach the age of being able to make children, do you, do you consider them children? Whenever you can make babies, you're considered a young adult. So you consider a five-year-old a young adult? Where is a five-year-old popping out babies? A five-year-old has gotten pregnant, right? Do you there, think that they're an adult? There are some weird uh, genetics five, out there. Yeah, you're, uh, you're yeah. So, talking so, about some weird. So Aisha, Aisha was case. nine years old. Nine years old. Do you think a nine-year-old got pregnant, right? Do you think that? Do you think that that is a woman? Do you think that's an adult? She's entering young adulthood. Yes. At that she's point. an adult at nine years you, old. Do you think babies can have babies? Hey, 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 dumbass! At nine years old. What about it? What's your point? Years, what do you mean? What about it? A nine-year-old is not a fucking adult, dude. Why, why are you calling? Why are you calling me sick? I'm not the one that is because allowing. You're the a one saying a nine-year-old is a young adult. Okay. Do you think it's okay for a nine-year-old to have sex with a sixty-year-old? No. Okay. No. Well, okay. So okay. So what do you mean by they're an adult? It's okay. There's a young adult. I mean, it, you know, it, it sound it may sound weird to you, but what sounds weird to me is when people refer to their 20 year old kids as their children, their kids, like their child, like they're a toddler. That sounds weird to me. I don't think that sounds as weird as what you're saying. Right. I think it, I think it is way better for my mom to consider me a kid in certain circumstances, right. Then to refer to, weird. then to refer to, right. A fucking nine-year-old as adult. I think right? that sounds weird. I think, I think, think you have your priorities. Enabled. I think, I think, I think, yo, 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 I think you have your priorities in the wrong fucking area. Hey, hey, with hey. 15 year old. Yeah. So you have your priorities in the wrong area, right? I think it's way better to consider literal 21 year olds like my age, right? Literally kids than to consider fucking Right, literal nine-year-olds adults, right? I don't know. N type a one in the chat if you'd rather consider a 21-year-old a kid than a nine-year-old an adult. Type one in the chat, please. Here's a better question for you. Do you prefer raising... Balls... Um... Like when I shoot the Tron's balls into Mag's bubbles, I don't know if more than one could be active at once. Because if more than one can't be active at once, then fire rate's useless. I would think that they can be, but I don't know. 